For a couple as a slide of the fielder at long off. It does pick up two more to the total. <laughs> Uh, out to square leg there for a single. Yeah, and hopefully now you should be able to hear us through Frogbox as well. Welcome to everybody listening through the Cricket New South Wales YouTube page. He comes in the left arm spinner again and cut out towards point, but good fielding there. Nice little tumble as well for extra effect. But yes, thank you if you are listening through Cricket New South Wales YouTube page through Frogbox. Welcome to Triple H Sports coverage here. Penrith taking on Gordon as uh, next one's up in the block hole to Axel Kalen. Gets it past the fielder inside the circle and make it back for two as the long straight boundaries here at Howell Oval. Having to do some extra, some extra distances coming in there, Shane Evans, to uh, be able to cut that one off. Yeah, you definitely do. Another wicket's fallen over at Coogee. We'll get that in the break in between Ooh, overs he's got him and he's gone they're excited about that one aren't they Penrith Axel Kalen tries to get outside of his crease get to the pitch of the ball got ball goes under his bat and it's some great work there by Tyron Lilliard the keeper to get those bails off quick as a flash Gordon now lose their second wicket for 63 Axel Kalen gone for 26 yeah, unfortunately, you can see Kalen just try to come down the pitch to meet the ball on the full, and unfortunately, just mistimed his judgment and just snuck under the bat and and Lydiard as quick as he could whipped off the bails, and I think Troy Penman had his finger going up at the same time as the st as the stumps were being removed. That's how good a stumping it is. But once again, as I said, had the opportunity to watch that walkabout wickets story that Channel Seven did when they made when the indigenous men's and women's team made the trip over to England a couple of years ago. So but if you've got YouTube, obviously you're watching us through Frogbox and the New South Wales YouTube page. Feel free to go and Google Google it. it goes for about an hour and a half, but it's a real nice story commemorating the first ever First Nations trip for an Australian cricket team over to England. Back I think it was eighteen eighty seven, maybe eighteen eighty eight if I'm mistaken but it was a really nice touch to be able to do that well said comes the new batsman is the wicket keeper in James Newton and he just uh, plays his first delivery to cover no run another wicket's fallen out at out at Coogee currently 5 for 61 well, we'll get some more about that in the in the break between overs as Newton plays his first aggressive shot Finds the fielder there. They'll look for two as there's a long way down the field. They'll try the double play. But both Gordon batters are in their crease. So a successful over there for Luke Hodges. He's one for nine off two. And now Gordon two for 65 off nine. They said the slow bowlers have come on and really put the brakes on this Gordon side. They definitely have. But, but going back to Kudji Oval, 
just in the start of the eighth over. Five for 62, Renwick Petersham, after being sent in by Fairfield Liverpool. You'd almost be sitting there saying this is a masterstroke. Jaden Simmons, the young leg spinner, getting Sams and Mitchell within three deliveries each. At the moment, Riley Edda Skipper's out there, and, Mc and Adam McTaggart has just joined them at the crease. Oh, the reverse sweep comes out from Kennedy. But good fielding there from Brent Williams at backward point Co covers that one up. Didn't have to move him. Didn't have to move a step. Then it come straight to him, perfectly positioned. Yeah, Bayless continuing with his right arm off spin around the wicket as uh, Kennedy pushes this one uh, behind square. Finds the fielder inside the circle at fine leg, but still uh, soft enough to get through for another single. That moves along. Gordon along two for 66 here in the tenth. We wait for the field to uh, set for the new batsman in uh, James Newton. His first time facing Bayless in this game. And he goes down oh. the ground. There is a fielder straight. He's coming around. Oh, great effort there by the fielder at long off to cut that one off. I said it looked a certain four once it got past the bowler. But I said it's long boundary straight here at Howl Oval. And he was able to cut that one off before it hit the rope. Newton picks up two to get off the mark. Bayless comes in again, and the big swing again. They appeal for a stumping. Tyron Lilliard, has been impeccable with the gloves behind the stumps, but just unfortunately for the Panthers, uh, still had something behind the crease, did Newton. Comes in again. This time it is just pushed down the ground. They'll look for two again, but no, not no urgency this time. So it's just another single to the total for Gordon. Two for 69 here. One delivery left here in the 10th. After this delivery, we will go back for Kiwi McRhinish for the next five overs. Is uh, just delicately played by Kennedy. The fielder here at backward point has to... Sort of dip, dive, duck, dive, and dodge to get around to that one. He picks up another two to the total, does Kennedy. He moves to 12. Gordon, two for 71, off 10. Said if you just tuned in, you're listening to Triple H Sports coverage here on Triple H 100.1 FM, as well as Frog Vox via the Cricket New South Wales YouTube page of this Kingsgrove Sports and a T20 semi final between Penrith and Gordon. And as we said before, to take you through the next five overs, Kiwi Mick Rynish. Thank you very much, Matt Mears. Yes, the spinners have come on and rattled through those five overs and slowed things down a bit here. And it will be Luke Hodges who's bowling a nice tidy spell, bowling to the uh, wicket keeper. And James Newton, who's played this late back with a point, but no run straight to the fielder. Of course, James Newton got 60 not out of 34 balls in their finals win against Parramatta a couple of weeks ago. Here goes Hodges again. Left arm bowler to the right-handed batter. Doesn't quite time this one, but we'll get a single down to the man at sort of long, long on area there. And it will be Tristan Kennedy back on strike now. So he's really getting through these overs quick, Hodges. The left arm spinner. Flights this one up, skips down the ground, hits it straight towards our commentary area, but along the carpet, and they'll pick up an easy single there. Don't worry, Kiwi, you're safe, mate. <laughs> Admittedly, it is still a huge hit to get it to get it up to us here on the floor. Yeah. It's about 75, 80 metres on the fly, but we're safe. Here he goes again, and he's just left this one outside Ooh. the off stump, maybe thinking that was going to be a wide... But uh, the umpire says no, that it's all fine. Here goes Hodges again now to Newton, who's another player in form. Oh, and that's a cracker of a ball. It's just a little bit quicker, and it's beaten him and nearly gone through to hit the wickets. You can, you can hear Lydiard in the effects, Mike, appealing for a, for a court behind. Unfortunately, no edge there. Here he goes again now. Oh, he's gone for this one. It's going to find some space out here over the covers, and eventually they're going to pick up a couple of runs as well. 
And after 11 overs, it's two for 75. Going back across to the women's first grade Premier Cricket match, the one that's currently in progress out at Raby Oval at Raby 1 between Campbelltown Camden and Manly Warringah first grade women. Campbelltown won the toss, decided to bat first. Currently 5 for 106, one ball short of 17 overs. The opener McGurk is in along with Moroni at the moment. But Nell has been the chief wicket, wicket taker at the moment. But yeah, Campbelltown Camden 5 for 109 in their game. This is also, remembering this is also a T20 match for Premier Cricket Women's First Grade this weekend. And for a few more weekends, obviously, because of the Women's Big Bash. So it's going to be Ben Ruffin to bowl now, who's a left arm medium quick bowler. And it will be Tristan Kennedy on strike. He's on 13, Newton on 8. Left armour, looks a little bit like Trent Bolt with that run up. And this is driven nicely down the ground. They'll pick up a single to that man just inside that 30 metre circle. And it's uh, 2 for 76. Is it more T Bolt or is it more M Stark? Yeah. That same... Very that same, similar, that, that isn't very it? Same, very yeah. similar motion between all three of them. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's kind of got that Trent Bolt look about, about on the way... Turns around at the top of his mark, so, sort of similar frame as well. As he bowls to Newton now, hits this backward a point, but straight to the fielder. There's pretty sharp work in there inside that 30 metre circle, no run. Yeah, just over at, over at Coogee. They've seen to stabilise just a little bit. Randwick Petersham, nine overs in, five for 74. They must have started a couple overs late because I think we're what, into the 11th, almost the end of the 12th at the moment. So it must have been a short delay starting over there. Here goes Ruffin again. And he's gone for this one. Oh. And he's caught. That's a sharp catch by Ryan Fletcher. Turned it around in that 45 degree angle and he's been caught. So good work by the fielder. It was down to his... He had to reach down to catch that one. And eventually James Newton's gone, who was a danger man a couple of weeks ago. It's three for 76. Yeah, it's just a shame on the frog box that... The viewers can't actually see that catch, but to pick it up probably three or four inches off the off the ground, about 20 metres in from the from the boundary, very good take there, judged it well. But unfortunately, Newton has to be making his way back into the sheds to think about what could have been at the moment. But seeing Ruffin getting a wicket, which is absolutely great for the Penrith side at the moment. Looks like Mitchell Lowell is the new player to the crease. So pretty evenly balanced match this one. Gordon came out flying. And now they're 3 for 76 here in the 12th over. Mitchell Lowell is a left-handed batter as he takes guard now. Tristan Kennedy still out there on 14. He's been in great form getting that 100 yesterday and 52 a couple of weeks ago against... Parramatta knocking them out of this competition. Is uh, going to be roughing again. Probably wasn't the greatest ball that one, but hey, they got the job done. It's all about the tactical fielding positions in 2020. Sometimes the loose balls you can get caught anyway if you've got the fielders placed well. So he runs in now roughing, and that's definitely a wide down the leg side that one. Three for 77. Yeah, radar is just a little bit off there for that ball at the moment. But, but as you said, even even Mizzy can bowl a really bad ball and still get wickets when he's bowling his stuff. And but don't worry, I don't know if he's behind me. So he's like, he's going to be like, oh. Tell you what, we're pushing the boundaries in the Triple H box today. And this is one is flicked comfortably off his pads to that man on the fence at deep square leg. And that means Mitchell Lowell is off the mark, three for 78. Yeah, but as you said, not, not every ball has yep. to be perfectly in the Especially right Especially in T20 competition. Yep. And even one day is Even now, one day is just yeah. as... It's a bit different you know, to test matches when yeah. normally you've got a bowl. Yeah, well, test is a lot different because it's over five days. But any, yeah. any short version game, you're occasionally going to bowl a bad ball. And sometimes the bad balls are the ones that actually do get you the wickets. Yeah, here goes Ruffin again. 
And this is guided down to that third man area. Nice shot there by Tristan Kennedy, who's taking his time here, looking maybe to try and bat through. Three for 79, Gordon here in the 12th. Also, apparently, the reason for the delay in the other T20 semi final starting. They couldn't get the site, they couldn't get the electronic scoreboard working correctly. It was in rugby union mode and they, they couldn't get it to switch over into cricket mode. Okay, don't mention union again today. No, here goes Ruffin. And this one is just flicked around the corner off his pads. Just getting a few singles here to keep that scoreboard ticking over. And that was uh, Mitchell Lowell. Three for 80, and that's 12 overs gone. Gordon, three for eighty. Yeah, but as I said, but that wasn't that wasn't a, having a dig at UK. We it's just oh, no, literally, no. obviously, because oh, no. Coogee Oval is also the home of the the current Shoot Shield premiers in the Galloping Green in Ramwick. Unfortunately, it still it was still sitting in rugby mode for some reason, and yeah. they were just struggling to get the electronics to switch over up in the clubhouse there. So. Hence the reason why there's about a three to four over delay between us and them. But speaking of that, they've just gone ten overs. Randwick Petersham going in batting first. Currently five for 85. Riley Eyre, 11 off 15. Along with McTaggart, 16 off 11. One four one six for McTaggart. Luke Hodges into the attack again. Three overs, one for 13. It's been tidy left arm bowling. And again, it's a dot ball. As the batter there, Lowell just... Flicks it into the onside for no run. He rattles through the overs here. Luke Hodges. He runs in again now. Flights it up. Skips down the wicket and drives this for a comfortable single to that man at long off. Three for 81. Was just able to place that ball very very carefully in what normally would be a, a short mid-on position, but was able to... But, of course, they're a bit wider. And it's a bit too far for Hodges to try and jump across the crease. He was able to just punch that through, take the single. He goes Hodges again to Kennedy. And this one, he's sort of got a bit muddled up. And there's a shy at the striker's end. They will squeeze away at away for a single. And it's 3 for 82 here in the 13th over. Gordon winning the toss and batting first. Kennedy now on 16. As he runs in now to... Mitchell Lowell, a bit shorter. They've gone for the shout. No. Umpire says no. Outside leg. Outside leg. <laughs> okay. And uh, here we go. So just trying to tie him up. This is a great little spell here. He's bowled his four overs straight. He's one for 15 off. And his fourth over runs in again now. Again dancing down the wicket was Lowell. He'll pick up one. They're going to come back for a second here as they shy at the bowler's end. And they'll pick up two. Three for 84. But once again, it's not too bad when you think about it. Okay, he's given up 17 runs and like one ball short of the end of his spell. But the way the rest of the bowlers are going, mate, Hodges has done great. Definitely. He's slowed things down here. And this time, he's going to be caught. And he's good at his little dance around the wicket here. These Penrith guys have got a lot of energy today. And Lowe is gone, trying the big drive down the ground. He'd had enough of being tied down. And he's caught literally straight down the ground. The fielder running across. And all of a sudden here, it's 3 for 84. Yeah, it's just a, a great, take, great take there by the fielder there. But just tried to be a little bit too cute and just lifted it without much behind it but unfortunately we can now see you can all you can hear the actual Penrith lower graders singing the old the old na 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 song that, as you always hear even if you're at Gordon out of Chatswood Oval you still hear it yeah. in the men's but it's also a nice way for the lower grade players to be able to get involved with the first grade side as we can now see that the new batter is just coming to the crease at the moment with that being over also We're yep. just trying to Smith Dolshi is the new man at the crease so this is good stuff here by Penrith got a few fans scattered around the picket fences here most of them trying to take shade in a 
pretty much a 30 degree day out in the middle if not more and uh, it is going to be Kennedy on strike four for 84 in fact so on strike now will be Kennedy again they bowl the spinners and he flicks this over the top here but there is a man down in that cow corner area to do the fielding. Four for 85. Also Bowling the, here is Adam Bayliss, of course. Also, one thing I've noticed I actually like is the Penrith jerseys. Obviously, we've seen them last year, and they've gone with an, with an indigenous print on their uniform. It's a real nice touch. Yep. And this time, Dolshi faces his first ball, just flicks it into the onside for no run. I've noticed they've got the merch stand uh, set up just behind us, Shane. I'm sure you'll be uh, visiting there before we leave. Yeah. What, you want a Penrith shirt? Oh, you're, you're, you're Mr. I've got a one of everything shirt. Here goes Adam Bayless again. Right arm spinner. Trying to cut down the angles for the batter. But this time Dolshi uh, drives it down the ground for a single. There's even a $5 bin. We'll go have a look in the. We'll go have a look in the break. No, Four for eighty-six <laughs> here on the fourteenth. But I did see some really nice shirts over there, including the commemorative fifty-year one too. And again, it's thrown up, but flicked off the pads very comfortably by Kennedy. He doesn't really look in a hurry out there. He's just tapping it round and backing them for a big hit at the end. But Penrith have just slowed this down mm. so well. Pretty evenly poised game. Dull sheet. Doesn't quite get hold of that one. No run. Fires it into the keeper, Tyron Lydiard. But this is also one of those opportunities where if you want to try and raise a bit of money for your club, these finals days are perfect. Yeah. And he's gone for the sweep here, Dolshi. He'll pick up a cheeky little single to that man around the corner on the 45 degree. And after 14 overs, Gordon winning the toss, batting first, four for 88. But yeah... Heading back over to Coogee for the, for the other T20 Kingsgrave semi. Currently, Renwick Petersham are 5 for 97, coming up to the end of the 12th over. Rollier is 18 off 22. McTaggart is 21 off 15, two fours and one six. From all reports, the six landed on the clubhouse. That's a big hit. Yeah. And we all, we all know how far that is. And the pitch that they're playing on is the one closest to Coogee Beach. So you know it is a big hit to land it over there. So, so this time it's going to be Jake Scott back into the attack. So they've bowled about eight or nine overs of spin and they're going to go back to a uh, medium pacer. Here he goes now, Scott. This one just guided back with a point who has a fire Ooh. at the stumps and it misses. They will pick up a single. It's hit the batter on the way through, so they're not going to take a second for the sportsmanship of the game. And it's four for 89. And you can see the fielder down at wide final leg, which is sitting there and absolutely just hurtling into that. Because he saw the deflection, he was just I think, more worried in case he did a Ben Stokes and run across the boundary rope and... You would have got the extra four in overthrows from it. Another bad memory for a Kiwi. <laughs> that one. Oh, he's gone down the ground. And this one should go to the fence. A couple of bounces and it rolls into the sight screen. So finally they break the shackles. It's been tight stuff out here. But good shot by Kennedy. He moves into the 20s now. And it's four for 93. Yeah, both mid on, mid off up inside the circle. So... Plenty of vacancy behind the bowler if you want to go in the air. So it's not as risky as uh, you would normally uh, assume with the fielders back on the boundary rope. So, so they want to keep pushing hard here, uh, Gordon. I said only five overs to go after this. They want to post a big total. Here goes Scott again to Kennedy. One. And they've appealed for a court behind, but the umpire says wide. And it's four for 94. I think, I think uh, just a little cheeky bluff there, trying <laughs> yeah. to uh, get the uh, umpire to think that it hit something on the way through. But also, unless I'm mistaken, they haven't taken their two over, what are they called these days, the power surge? Yeah, it's a power surge. Yeah, yeah they, haven't, they haven't taken that as yet either. So that's going to be 
interesting when they take that, or do they wait to the 18th and then I think, I think tee they, off? I, th- yeah, I was going to say. Here goes Scott again to Kennedy. He's advanced down the wicket. He's missed it through to the keep and no run. Mm. A few little cheeky words by Jake Scott on his way down. Maybe only, asking if he's going to buy a bit of the Penrith merchandise later. Who knows? <laughs> the only reason I know that it's not currently in effect because I can see three and then a couple, three on the under the under the shade of the trees right beneath the Penrith mm. lower graders and out at a very, very wide third man and one out of point or real deep point. Scott again to Kennedy. Nice little shot off his hip. He'll pick up a single to that man on the fence. And it's four for 95 here in the 15. Yeah, nice little uh, play into the leg side there. They said, subscribing to that um, usual T20 notion of, of not having someone at mid wicket, they do have a whitish mid on um, as he is up inside the circle. But if you can get into that vacant area near the umpire, there's at least one there. He goes Doshi on strike now. Oh, oh, what a delicate little shot that was as he guides it to that third man area. And Yay. it's gone for four. The fielder down there has had a bit of a collision with the picket fence. And eventually they get the boundary they need. Four for 99. That was a nice little shot there by Doshi. Just using the pace of the ball. That's what, that's what you call a, a controlled glide, and yep. it was very well played there, and just a little bit of a stumble by the by the third man just to knock it over the boundary. Here goes Scott again to Dolce. And this is a nice little shot here through the covers, and they'll pick up an easy single. Brings up the 100 here for the Gordon side, and after 15 overs winning the toss and batting first, Gordon 4 for 100. Over to you, Matt Mears. Thanks, Kiwi Mick. If you are just tuning in, you're listening to Triple H Sports coverage here on Triple H 100.1 FM and Frogbox via the Cricket New South Wales YouTube channel of this semi-final match between the home side Penrith and Gordon Winner plays in the grand final next Sunday. So it's a big, big ramifications winning and losing here. Lots of prize money thanks to our friends at Cricket New South Wales and from uh, Harry Solomon and Kingsgrove Sports on the line next week as we see Bayless continues. The ball gets hit away into the leg side. They'll look for two. With some good fielding down there at deep mid-wicket. They did look for two, but uh, I think well and truly uh, needing to be sent back there. No two in that. It's a very short side boundaries here at Howell Oval as... uh, Bayless continues here. He's in his fourth over. The reverse sweep comes out. The big appeal. But Shane, with your umpiring experience, you Down can tell leg. us. Well, listen, said, you bowling right arm off spin around the wicket. You, you've sort of got to hope for the perfect ball. Getting it so it pitches out in, in line with the stumps. Then turning enough yeah. to, to go on and hit the stumps. So probably thinking that it could have landed outside as well. As goes down and plays this one. Behind square leg. And uh, I said the fielder at deep square having to run around to pick that one up just inside the boundary rope. Two to the total there for Kennedy. He moves on to 25. We can tell you a six wicket has fallen at Coogee. More details are in the over. Next one here again. He goes down the ground as Kennedy. But finds the fielder at long off. Just another single to the total. Four for 104 here. I said we're down to the last five overs. Still haven't seen the power surge yet as well for Gordon here. They're going to have to probably... They'd probably be at least looking for 150 here. As this one goes again through Doshi through the onside. But uh, he can only find the man at deep square. One more to the total. That gets him to double figures. He's now on 10. You'd almost be... In a Gordon mood, you'd sit there and say, okay, let's get to 18, then take it. Well, maybe that's what they're thinking as this one goes again down the ground. Cross bat shot from Kennedy, but again, just finds the man at long on, a long off, to finish the over. Bayless finishes his four overs, none for 21. Said the spinners really are putting the brakes on here for Penrith. Gordon, a four for 106, four overs left in this innings. 
Well, they're not, there's not much of a score difference between our game and obviously the one out at Coogee at the moment. They're halfway through their 14th over. Randwick Petersham are currently 6 for 108. McTaggart was the last wicket to fall, stumped by Farmer off the bowling of Frendo, who, if I remember correctly, a couple of weeks ago took some took a couple of key wickets in that win by Fairfield Liverpool over Sydney Uni out at Uni Oval that you guys called. So, yeah, 6 for 108 coming into the end of the 14th over. What's that? Another change here from the northern end. Um, with Ryan Fletcher coming back into the attack. His first two overs costing 19. Comes in again here and a oh. reverse scoop past the keeper. I said it will be pulled in just by the man down at third man. They'll pick up two. I said you can see that one on Frogbox if you're... Uh, Listening and watching it through that, if it's first time hearing us, thank you, welcome. I said Triple H sports team here. We do cover a lot of uh, Sydney grade cricket, whether it's uh, the Kingsgrove T20 Cup or the, the women's first grade premier competition. That's again, Fletcher coming in this time to Kennedy and big swing outside the off stump. Goes through to the keeper in uh, Tyron Lilliard, no run. Yet an update for us from uh, Coogee, Shane. Yes, it's six for 108. Also, the the last three of the women's first grade Premier Cricket games have all started. We'll start giving you updates as of the end of this over for all of those games. So it comes in again and again. Kennedy, just the big swish outside the off stump. First of all, out at Maryland's for the women's. Parramatta taking on Sydney. Parramatta winning the toss and batting. They're currently none for 18. Out of Billball Oval, the number two field for Penrith. They won the toss and decided to field first, sending Gordon in. Good start for them. Gordon are currently one for seven. Fletcher again to Kennedy. This time he does make connection with it, does the batter, but back to the bowler. You can hear the Penrith uh, fielders in the effects, Mike. They are very happy with this over so far. Only the two off it. Two balls remaining. And in the last of the ladies' games, they have just started. Bankstown taking on St. George. Bankstown winning the toss. Fielding first, St. George, uh, St. George Sutherland, sorry. A none for eight out of Bankstown Oval. Oh, this one's hit through the offside by Kennedy. They'll look for two. They're coming back. Mm. Oh, it said maybe the bounce throw just costing him there, Penrith, but he was able to make his ground with Kennedy. Two more to the total. Kennedy moves to 31. Gordon, four for 110. One ball left here in the 17th over. Fletcher, come back. He took a bit of tap from Tim Crawford early on, but he's only gone for four. So far in this over. Oh, this is short Ooh. and wide. Almost the, the commentator's curse there, but <laughs> he's trying to keep it wide, trying to stay away from this short lakeside boundary towards the pack coming scoreboard. But uh, just maybe just trying to get it a bit too wide there. Currently out of Coogee Oval, 14.3 overs in. Randy, Randy Peets, a 6 for 119, taking on Fairfield Liverpool. And now comes in final delivery. This one's on the stumps and pushed by Kennedy straight out to the fielder at cover. No run. So that'll finish Fletcher's third over. He's none for 24. And uh, Gordon, 4 for 111 after 17. Just making our way back to women's first grade Premier Cricket. We can, we'll can head out to Raby Oval to the number one field. Campbelltown Camden batting first against Manly Warringah. Campbelltown at their 20 over end of innings, a 5 for 122. McGurk, the, the opening batter, oh. best of run scorer with 38. The Manly innings to start in the next minute or two as the wind decides to almost take out everything and almost knock over Frogbox at the same time. So we are just trying to 
get everything resorted. So, as we can see, Kennedy just punches one off the hip and around the corner for a leg by actually. So, so apologies for anyone that was watching the frog box feed and it. No, the frog box. I think I think you find Shane. The frog box feed is fine. It's uh, the the Triple H connection is just the one that's having some issues at the moment. So we should still be coming through to through fog box. Must that have. should be back on Triple H as well as we get the new bowler coming in. And that one's just played yeah. by Kennedy. Tries to go down the leg side. It is actually called wide. Apologies for the technical difficulties here. The wind came up. The tent went flying. The internet port went flying. But I think we're all back on air everywhere. Yeah, we definitely are there as well. But as I was trying to say before that happened, Camden and Camden finished everything. They're five for one, two, two. Mainly the bat very shortly. And he comes in again from that southern end and just played nicely into the offside. Ooh. Said again, some good work in there at backward point. But um, just missing the stumps. I think it was more watching the Gordon play, as you can <laughs> see in the frog box. Having to duck because the way that ball bounced, and if he had stayed stood up, he probably would have copped it in the scone, just the way it bounced off the edge of the square, and, and he just missed him because of the duck. So, Yum, Dodger all coming in again to Doshi. This one's flicked through the onside. Gets between the gap between the two fielders out there, but... I said, again, this Penrith side has been on point. And they've been able to uh, cut that one just down to a single. They haven't been able to get away here, have Gordon? No, they definitely haven't. But it's been a good, good comeback from this Penrith side, obviously, after giving up 30-odd runs in that first couple of overs to bring it back to not even three and over. Here you go, Dodrell now coming in again to Kennedy as is pushed into the offside. I believe we are now back on Triple H 100.1 FM. Apologies, few technical and wind-related issues here, but we are now back. Uh, we should have hopefully still been coming through loud and clear through Frog Box though for you. So if you are listening on the uh, through the 100.1 FM or through the apps or through triplehfm.com.au. You can watch through YouTube as well, through the uh, Cricket New South Wales YouTube channel, and you'll be able to find us with the uh, commentary there. As uh, now it comes in again to Doji. He flicks this one off his pads. Some delicate wrist there, but just finds the fielder at backward square. Another single to the total. We can... We can also tell you over at Kujiobu in the other Kingsgrove T20 semi-final, just starting the 16th over, Randwick Petersham batting against Fairfield Liverpool, a 6 for 129 with Rolly Air, the skipper, 33 off 32, and Egan has come to the crease. He's 12 off 8 with one big 6. Well, we can, yeah, we can just, sorry, we'll go back to the game here. Dodrell finishes yeah. his third over, one for four. Gordon, four for one, one seven after 18. We can tell you they have taken the power surge. So it will be the last two overs, will be the power surge. Only two fielders out allowed outside the inner circle for the Panthers. So is Kiwi on six catch watch down here in front <laughs> of us? Well, hopefully we'll be okay. As I said, we, we survived the tent falling over. Uh, hopefully we'll survive any sixes that come our way as uh, Fletcher comes back for his fourth over. And again, Kennedy, this t uh, sorry, this time Joji, but they've been having some problems getting him away outside the off stump. This one again just goes through the keeper, Lilliard, no run. We can also tell you Rolier has just been dismissed.
by Baraba for 33. Seven for 129, halfway through the 16th over against Fairfield Liverpool. As uh, now comes in again to Josie, can he find the short boundary? He goes for it, he gets across. But there is a fielder there inside the boundary there in front of the Penrith Faithful on top of that shed, in front of the Pat Common scoreboard. So it's just one more to the total. Joshy goes to 13, Gordon 4 for 118. Ten balls left in this innings. It will be interesting to see where the grand final is next week. Normally it would be at a home club, but Cricket Central may be the option. I'll try and find something out during the innings break. As again comes in again. This time he goes high, does Kennedy. Oh, almost. almost a specky taken. They've got the fielders at long on and long off up inside the circle. Great running there. Sees them get back, but as it just teased the fielder there, didn't it, Shane? It, over the top of his head at mid-off, but great running Definitely by Gordon. They, especially when they can pick up three off it. Mm. And that's only probably gone about 75 metres most, and to be, able to, to be able to very quickly turn that, that's a that's great running by, this, by the Gordon players. Yeah, so you've seen Kennedy's intent now that with the power surge. What will Doji do? He tries to get across to the offside. He scoops this one Four. through and finds the boundary. Much needed boundary here for Gordon. I said they now move to four for one, two, five here as we close in into the end of the 19th. I said it, it has been slow going for Gordon since the introduction of the spinners, but I said this power surge, you just feel they need to try and get as many runs as possible, give himself something to defend. Fletcher comes in now again to Josie, and again he goes, tries to go down the ground, but can only find the bowler in his follow-through, no run. That was a very very well bowled Yorker there and dug out there by Kennedy, because if he doesn't, you're seeing stumps just going everywhere. Well, I said he's seen what Josie's trying to do. He's trying to get across to that offside to shovel the ball almost to this short boundary towards the Pat Cummins scoreboard. Final delivery here, and this time he goes through no the ball offside. Front foot. Oh, he gets it through the field, though, so they might be able to get a few more. It's going to tease that fielder. Does well to keep it inside the boundary. But again, another three runs here to the total, as well as the no ball. So that is very much helping out this Gordon side. They take oh. another seeky run there again with the bowler not paying attention. Gets the gets more importantly, it gets the striking batsman back on strike. So they can't change the field here, Penrith. No, they still they can change it because they have crossed once. Because it's not a boundary four. Oh, okay. It is a run four. They can they can change the the field if they so choose, but as so we not can much see, you can do, no. I don't think. But as you can see, umpire Moran just giving the wiggle the finger to say free hit. I said, what will he do here, Josie? Again, tries to go to the offside, but it is cracked through the off. But good fielding there at point. Sees it just to go for a single. So I said, a, a good over there for Gordon. As we just wait for play HQ to update. Um, but said it was a good over there for Gordon. I said a big one to the total. I think Gordon now four for at least 130 here as the uh, final over begins. Well, the 125 that you're seeing on mm. the frog box is correct. Obviously, we know run that last ball, but this last over, if you're Gordon, you wanted at least 15, 16 runs off it. Yeah, they, they need to try and at least get past 140. As Joshi just plays this one through to the offside. They'll jog through for a single. Going back over to Kuji again. Halfway through the 17th over. Ramwick petersham a 7 for 134. Egan's on 16 and Ryan Ninnan has just come to the crease. He's one off two. You can tell you Fletcher finished his four overs, none for 38. Four for 132 here. 19.1 overs, so we have caught up. 
There's Kennedy on strike. What can he do? He flashes it through the offside. Oh. Nobody back there. One bounce into the fence for four. That is the short side. Kennedy goes towards uh, the onside to free up that uh, that offside, and he gets the ball over that ring field there on the on the uh, thirty yard circle. Much needed four for Gordon. Kennedy moves to forty, and it's now uh, four for one thirty five. Apologies, is, it is Kennedy on strike, but it looks like uh, they, the runs are going to Doji. But it is definitely Kennedy on strike as the next one just goes through to the keeper, plays that another big slash through the offside, but no connection this time. Going back down to Rabia over number one for women's first grade premier cricket. Campbelltown Camden taking on Manly. Campbelltown posted five for one, two, two. Terrible start for the Manly side. 2.1 overs in, one for three already. Graham run out, third ball duck. So Dodrell getting the uh, count in. And, but Kennedy can just push it to the fielder at backward point. One more to the total. Four for 132. Heading out to Maryland's Oval for Parramatta taking on Sydney. Parramatta winning the toss and batting first. They've just lost their first wicket of the call, the skipper. 5.4 .4 overs in, 1 for 36. Murdoch and is in. Wilson's just come to the crease. Well, we can say it is 4 for 137. Frogbox just having a little bit of a issue keeping up with the score as it's played away by Doshi into the onside. Between the two fielders there, they'll look for two. There is a little bit of a slip there from the fielder at backward square. So it lets him get back on to strike. So I can tell you that uh, with one ball left in the innings, four for 139, Gordon here. Now the question is where, if you're Gordon, is going to get you the m biggest result? Well, so they have come back to at least post something that's going to be defendable. Oh, is it short? They run the bye, misses it. The keeper misses it. The ball is at the batting end, at the striker's end. So we will finish on a bye. Good thinking there by Kennedy to at least pick up one extra to the total. So 20 overs now have gone here at Howell Oval in the Kingsgrove Sports Centre T20 semi final. Gordon posting four for 140 off their 20. We'll go through the uh, scorecard for you. So Tim Crawford, the skipper opening up, he finished 23 off 16, five fours in that t innings before he was bowled by Liam Dodrell. Axel Kalen, he was looking good until he was out stumped off by uh, Tyron Lilliard off the bowling of Luke Hodges. He was 26 off 22. James Newton, he came and went eight off 12. He was caught by Ryan Fletcher off the bowling of Rowan. Mitchell Lowell, again, didn't impress. He was five off seven. Caught by Jordan Watson off the bowling of Luke Hughes before it was uh, Tristan Kennedy. He was, the, he was the linchpin at number three. He batted through 41, not out of 43 with two fours in his innings. And uh, Sam Joshi, he finished 25, not out of 21, three fours. 12 extras in that total as well that saw the... Uh, Gordon side finished four for 140 off their 20. The Penrith bowling, Ryan Fletcher, four overs, none for 38. Like I said Liam Dottrell, he finished up there. Four overs, one for 22. Jake Scott, he was expensive for the Panthers. Two overs, none for 27. Luke Hodges, he was probably the pick of the bowlers. Four overs, two for 17. Brent Williams, just the one over for seven. Adam Bayless, he was impressive as well. None for 21 off four. And Rowan Ruffin, one over, one for five. Kiwi Mick joins us as well. Your thoughts on that first innings? I said it was a good start by Gordon, but yeah. the spinners for the Panthers brought it back. Do you think, though, 140 can be a defendable total here? And what we've seen is very quick and short side boundaries here at Howell Oval. Yeah, I'll, I'll tip Penrith to chase this down. What One thing that is interesting with this score, 
They lost four wickets, but they got 140. It's kind of unusual. Normally, if you got that, it'd sort of be seven or eight down, battling through to 140, but to lose four wickets. So it's almost they just couldn't quite cut loose, especially against those spinners. Hodges really slowed it down. Funny sort of a score four for 140. I think Penrith at home um, should get it. But, um, yeah, I mean, they did pretty well. Gordon came out flying out of the blocks, but I think Penrith would be a happier team at the moment. Yeah, Shane Evans has said it's going to take a, a big performance by Gordon's bowlers. They're going to have to take early wickets in the power play uh, if they want to uh, restrict uh, Penrith to below 140 and, and make this Kingsgrove uh, T20 grand final next Sunday. They definitely will. They'll need to... Honestly, be keeping Penrith to less than 50 at the halfway mark. Make him put as much pressure as they can in that second second 10 over block of knowing that you're chasing at least 9 and over, possibly even 10. But, yeah, obviously common sense is you need to be taking wickets in that first 4 over power play because it wouldn't surprise me as soon as they hit that 10 over mark, they take that power play early and try and wrap it up early if they can. Well, just before we go, Shane, have you got an update from the other Kingsgrove uh, semi-final out at Coogee? Randy Pete's taking on Fairfield Liverpool. Certainly do. We're coming up to halfway through the 18th over. Randwick Petersham are currently 7 for 152. Egan is currently in on 25, and Ryan Ninnan has just joined him. He's 9 off 6. So 7 for 152, 17.3 gone. By the time we come back after our break, we should be able to have a... A full uh, change of inning score for you. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll take a quick break here on Triple H 100.1 FM and on Frogbox via the Cricket New South Wales YouTube channel. Um, and we'll be back shortly. We'll give you those updates. We'll give you some uh, scores around the grounds. I said, when we come back, Penrith needing 141 for victory and to take on the winner of that Randy Peets. Fairfield Liverpool game in the grand final next week. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in about five or six minutes' time.
Yes, hello and welcome back to Howl Oval. Triple H Sports coverage of Kings Row Sports in a T20 semi final. Kings Row Sports in a cup between Penrith and Gordon. If you're just tuning in, we've had our first 20 overs. Gordon posting four for 140. Now it'll be up to the Panther sign if they can uh, chase that down here on their home deck. So make sure you stay tuned for the next 80 minutes or so and we'll have that question answered for you. So there are some other games going on around the ground. Shane Evans, um, have you got? If there has the uh, other semi-final out at Coogee Oval between the Randy Peets and Fairfield Liverpool? Are they in there now in their innings break? No, they're not because Jake Egan's decided his last four scoring shots. Six, 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 six. Wow. Gee. Two of them going on to heading down towards Sydney, so heading into the clubs there, and then two over the scoreboard heading towards Newcastle. So with five balls remaining. They're 8 for 176. Jake Egan is 47 of 24 with a rear and out there doing the right thing the talent should do. Give him the strike. He's one from one. Um, also, we have some women's premier cricket going on. We uh, certainly any score do. updates from those games around the grounds? Well, obviously, we already know that our Lady Rangers defeated Sydney Uni. Sorry, Georgia. By, by 12 runs early today, Northern District's posting 8 for 105 in their T20 match and restricting Sydney Uni to 6 for 93. Unfortunately, Zoe Benjamin only getting one solitary run there. Out of Raby Oval number one, Campbelltown Camden taking on Manly Warringah. Campbelltown batting first, 5 for 122. Two. In response, Manly are 1 for 24 after 6. In the late games, they only kicked off at 3.30. Out of Maryland's Parramatta taking on Sydney women. Parramatta winning the toss and batting first. Parramatta 2 for 51. Starting the 10th over. Thakur and Murdoch both dismissed. Wilson in on six. And Chevelle Vaughan, the captain, has just come to the crease. She's none from two. Also out of Bill Ball Oval, the number two field here for for the Penrith Cricket Club. They're taking on Gordon out there. Penrith winning the toss and sending Gordon in. From all reports, it's a good choice because 7.2 overs in, Gordon at 2 for 34. Openers Mitchell and Sid Graves are both back in the shed for 1 and 10 respectively with Hunter and the wicketkeeper captain in Kamari both on 3 at the moment. So it's 2 for 34 in the 8th over for Gordon taking on Penrith. And last but not least, out of Bankstown Oval. Bankstown winning the toss and deciding to field first against St George Sutherland. 8.1 overs in. St George Sutherland are 1 for 42. Kelly is the only wicket to fall so far. Currently in for St George Sutherland is Rhiannon Dick and Aaron Briscoe on 10 and 11 respectively. Thank you for that, Shane. Umpires, the Gordon Fielders and the two Penrith openers in Tyron Lilliard and Ryan Gibson have made their way to the crease to go through the first five overs for you, to take you through the first five overs even for you. Kiwi Mick Reinish. Thank you very much, Matt Mears. Yes, so the target is 141 to win here for Penrith, playing at home, and everyone set in place as the crowd's built beautifully through the day here at Howell Oval, and Callum Bladen will be getting ready to fire things up, of course, Ryan Gibson, the captain of the team, opening the batting with Tyron Lydiard, the wicket keeper. And it will be Lydiard to face the first ball, left handed batter. And interesting score by Gordon, 4 for 140. Normally, if you lose four wickets in the 20 overs, you probably want to get a bit more than that. Very good conditions here, it's been a good pitch, so. They're going to have to bowl well here to beat Penrith. So he runs in now, does blade in the right armour. And straight away he starts with a massive wide down the leg side as the umpire extends the arms. No wicket for one. 
Yeah, not the start Gordon would be looking forward to. They they know they need wickets here in the power play if they want to be able to uh, make it as hard as possible for Penrith to chase the target of 141. They'd be probably looking for at least two, if not three. But the Panthers, on the other hand, they'll be looking to take advantage of these first four overs with only two outside the inner circle. Here goes Bladen again to Lydiard. And this is a nice ball as he just respectfully pushes it back to the bowler. The nice defensive shot there by Lydiard. And it's a dot ball. We can also tell you there is an innings change out at Coogee. In the end, Jake Egan, 61 off 28. Randwick Peterson post 8 for 192. They did well. Not too bad considering they were yep. 7 for 110. Yep. To get to 192, that's a great effort out there at Coogee Oval. Here goes Bladen again, the right armour, steaming in here at Howell Oval. And he's flicked it round the corner, Lydiard. What a great shot that'll be for. Put down the glasses for that one. The crowd loving it here in the heart of Penrith, right next to Penrith Stadium and the Leagues Club. It's a nice little setup here, Matt Mears, isn't it? Yeah. We've even got the um, trots down the road as well, which I've been to a couple of times <laughs> on a Thursday. Yeah, I said our, our first time calling from, from out here. Uh, thank you for, for everything Penrith Cricket Club have done to make it possible for us to do that. Um, but yeah, a great little setup. I said good to see some of the lower graders from both sides as well here, making a very good atmosphere here. Yep. Bladen again. Lydiard's given us a hell of a crack through the offside. That is a great shot by the left-hander. Bit of Devin Conway in that one. Oh, here we go. And it's no wicket for nine. You've got to brush off those losses and move on. <laughs> we play South Africa on Wednesday, the Kiwis. It's going to be a late night. <laughs> there's well, another, the, there's ten, another loss. Yeah, well, yeah, there you oh, go. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll change well, the subject <laughs> back to this one. <laughs> oh, I can't win today. No, no. It's all no. happening here at Howell Oval. No, because I guarantee you if Australia would lost everything, you'd be giving it to I know, us. So. I know, I <laughs> know. Here goes Blade into Lydiard. Oh, nice ball, but he's going to get a cheeky little single. So Penrith have started like Gordon did. No wicket for 10 here in the first, remembering the target, 1-4-1. One, one. The one strange thing about Tyron Lydiard also, he's also ambidextrous. Normally, when like when you see him cap, when you see him keeping, he'll throw with his right hand, but it, for some reason he likes to, he prefers to bat left-handed. He can bat right-handed and bat quite well. But obviously, depending on the situation, will depend on whether he decides to stay left-handed. Like, obviously, if you're hitting towards a short boundary. Or you want to go right-handed, depending on the what well, needs to happen. Well, I said, usually when you're right-handed and bat left, just about that top hand and, and what controls it. Yeah. Ryan Gibson on strike, the captain. And he's given that a good crack. But no, we didn't really time it in the end. Straight to point. For no run. What, one of the things I've learnt coming here, it's got that good community feel as well, doesn't it? Matt Mears, you've got the barbecue going. They're selling the merchandise here. Everyone's having a few coldies when we turned up. It's just a real mm. relaxed, a very relaxed feeling here. I said, you said you even know, you don't notice, but you can see the, the, the people under the trees there to the eastern side. They've yep. got their little camp chairs set up in the shade. You've got the, the lo Penrith lower graders up near the scoreboard. Absolutely. So... Oh, Gibson with a swing and a miss outside the off stump, through to the keeper. Had a little fish at that one outside the off stump. One over gone. Penrith, no wicket for 10. The target, one for one. And we also know Ryan Gibson, how potent he is when he's batting. We've seen him here in one-day games and two-day games be able to post, well, especially in two-day games, be able to post a century in a, in a session. In a couple of one-day games, he's posted 150 off... 75 and 80 deliveries. If his eyes in, this total will be demolished very, very quickly. So Quincy Titterton comes in now. And of course, he got one for 20 off his four overs against Parramatta a couple of weeks ago. So that was good tight bowling. They'll need that and some wickets as he's bowling to Tyron Lydiard, the wicket keeper and opening batsman for Penrith. Full toss to start. Punched down the ground for no run. A different sort of a mood. He probably would have tried to smash that one outside out of the ground. <laughs> but it's a dot ball. 
but going back to Matt's comment, yeah, it is a real community, almost like a, a sporting zone here. Yeah. So obviously you've got literally Panther Stadium, Blueback, call it whatever you want, yep. literally on the other side of the grandstand that we're sitting in front of at the moment. Here goes Titterton again. Lydiard with a nice flick off the pads, but there is a man down there at square leg. They'll pick up one. And then also, you, not even not even a nice drive straight across the road. You've got the Panthers complex over there. So yep. if you want to get a feed, obviously, if you've been here for a Panthers game, or even after today, some people will probably head back across there. Got you got... Got your choice of foods there. And Christmas everything's creams. within walking distance yeah. here, isn't it? It's quite a good setup. Uh, Even the Aqua Golf and the Waves Aquatic Centre. Yep. So it's Gibson on strike. Oh, Whoosh. he's gone for a huge swing and a miss there. That one would have been into those trees at Cow Corner if he hit. But it's no run. It was going one of two places for hits. As you said, down to Cow. Or probably straight down our throat. Oh, if you got the got that outside edge, it would have flown well and truly over that rope down in front of us and one of us would have been having to try and stop it. So Quincy Titterton here. Gordon need a wicket. The crowd just poised here waiting for what's going to happen. Bit of a slower ball here but nice little deft shot away behind that point area for a single. Penrith no wicket for 12 in the second over. Just heading back down to Rabia Oval for women's first grade Premier Cricket. Campbelltown Camden taking on Manly. The Ghosts, as they like to be called, posting 5 for 1, 2, 2 in their 20 over match. Currently, Manly 1 for 47, 1 ball short of 9 overs complete. And we'll get to the other game shortly. Here goes Titterton now to Lydiard. Oh, and he's given that a good whack. Behind point, one bounce to the fielder. And uh, no run. Yeah, Matt right there at backward point. There is a fielder down at third man, but you just feel if it, if it beat him there, it was flying along, even to that yep. uh, longer boundary towards the eastern side. From what we can see, obviously you can't see it on the frog box, but there, there's a bunch of young, young cricketers out there. That's the Penrith Youth Age Championship under-15s team. Ah. Oh, he struck him on the pad, but they're going to run through for a single. That was a nice length ball there. And, uh, in fact, it's a little bit of bat as well, so it's no wicket for 13. And that was a pretty tidy over there, only three off it. No wicket for 13 after two, Penrith. The target, one for one. Well, we've always seen Quincy Titterton be very economical, whether it's in the, four, uh, the T20 format or the one-day format for Gordon for the last couple of seasons, so... It'll just be interesting to see now how they can, how Penrith react to this over, obviously only getting a couple. Okay, fair enough. They're still only chasing just on seven runs and over when they started the innings. Here goes Bladen again. Right armour to the left-handed batter. He's gone for this. He's edged it. And it will go down to third man for a single. So he definitely swings hard at it. No wicket for 14. That's a, that is one very strong arm out there from from third man to be able to put it straight over the top of the stumps there. And as we as we can see from here, it's not a short boundary either Yeah. when you're going behind the stumps. So to be able to put it within an inch of the top of the bales, mate, that's an arm that I think any of us would like. Here goes Callum Bladen again to Gibson, the captain. And he's given this a good whack over the covers. I'm not sure if it's going to go to the fence, so it'll pull up just short by a metre, but they will pick up a couple of runs. Quick question, have Penrith ever made the T20 final? I'd imagine not. Would that be right? Uh, not in the last couple of years. I believe they have been there. Okay. Maybe maybe one of the SCG days, we call. Yeah, All back right. in the SCG, I think would have been maybe eight, nine years ago. Yep. So they haven't been there for a Actually, while anyway. No, it, no, they were because that was the year that when we had Mr. Caruso, unfortunately, with us as well. And he was he was sitting there talking to a couple of their players at the time. That would have been like 2017, possibly. So, yep. Gibson on strike. 
And what a ball. LBW, it's all over for Gibson. That was a great slower ball. He threw it up, looked like it was going to be around waist height, but it dropped on him and hit his toes. That was a great slower ball there. And all of a sudden now, Penrith are one for 16. Yeah, the big appeal there. And Gibson, he's just gone down on one knee, trying to scoop that slower ball across to that Pat Cummins scoreboard short boundary. But I said it was a great deception there from yep. the opening bowler for Gordon. And I said Gibson just too far through the shot, couldn't do anything about it, and uh, hits the pad almost in front of middle. And uh, he has to make his way back. Big early wicket to get Ryan Gibson. I said we know that his pedigree, we've seen him play uh, at least for the Adelaide Strikers in the BBL in past seasons. That's a huge wicket for Gordon here. Uh, and they much needed wicket in the power play. That would have come up really nicely also on, on Frogbox for anyone that is listening to us. Once again, thank you for joining us. And if you are on Triple H 100.1 FM and you do want to see the vision, just jump onto YouTube and and search for New South Wales Premier Cricket and then Kingsgrave T20 semi final Penrith v Gordon. But that would have looked so perfectly plumb and middle stump on the replay, almost looked like a hand grenade had yeah. just lobbed yep, and dropped on just it. dropped at the time where you'd be expecting to swing through it and it's just hit him plumb on the leg. Like Umpire Marine had, would have had absolutely no hesitation to to raise that finger. So so Nick Adams, the new man at the crease, he's a left-handed batter. Two lefties out there in the middle now. Here goes Bladen. And a big swing and a miss Ooh. outside the off stump here by Nick Adams on his first ball. And it's straight through to the keeper. So Gordon just warming into this bowling effort now. They're going to try and... These first four overs, if they can keep it tight, then anything could happen here. Interesting match here. Semi-final cricket runs on the board. If you can just get early wickets, you can defend scores. Here goes Callum Bladen again to Nick Adams. Oh, and that one is that in-between sort of a length. They're eventually going to get a cheeky single here. And, um, yeah, umpire says a leg by. So it's one for 17. Going back to the women's cricket, but we're going to go a different way. Women's Big Bash down at City Power Stadium. Junction Oval, call it what you will. The Melbourne Stars taking on the Perth Scorchers. Melbourne Stars won the toss and decided to bat first. They are currently 6 for 150. Annabelle Sutherland again in the runs. 49 off 27. And that is with just over four overs remaining in the... Well, sorry, correction. Four balls left in there in that innings against the Perth Scorchers. So once again, 6 for 150 against Perth. So Lydiard's on 12. Here goes Bladen again. And this one, a nice length. Can't do much with that. Dot ball. Three overs gone. Penrith, one for 17. The target, one for one. Also, in the one Sheffield Shield game, which is still currently in progress, Tasmania taking on Queensland down at Bell Reef Oval. Tasmania need another 108 runs to win that outright. They're currently three for a five for 324. Chasing four three four two four three two for the win there. Also overnight we all we all already know that the Netherlands also beat Bangladesh in the men's World Cup and yeah. later on tonight you have Adelaide taking on the Brisbane Heat in the women's big bash. And India, England and World Cup. And that would be good. Yeah. Titterton again. Ooh, oh drop that him. would have been a stunning court and bold if he got it. But he's dropped it. That was Nick Adams on strike. He hit it pretty hard. Reached out with the left hand, Titterton, but puts it down. Yeah, just one of those ones in your follow through that they either stick or they don't. And unfortunately for, for Titterton and uh, for the Gordon side, just didn't stick. Whoa. Oh. Um. And here goes Titterton again. This has gone up. And it's going to be six as well. What a shot there by Adams. 
He just swiveled around and hit it to fine leg for six. A little bit finer, and that would have absolutely smashed the marquee above us. <laughs> it would have taken out all the equipment here. Frog box One for us. 23. Frog box us, everything like that. But uh, he just needed to break the shackles, didn't he, uh, Adams? It was just getting a little bit bogged down, but it was the ball that was there to hit, and uh, hit it, did he? Titterton again. This time Adams just push it, pushes it into the offside for no run. Bit of a slower ball comeback there. And, uh, last over of the power play. Lydiard on 12, Adams on 6. As uh, Titterton gets to the top of his mark again. And he runs in now the right armour. Quite a bouncy action. And that's another little tricky slower ball. They're going to run through for the bye. Ooh. Pretty average throw by the keeper. They'll pick up one run, and it's uh, one for 24. Yeah, good call there from uh, from Lydiard, knowing that he was able to make it. It was going to be harder for the keeper to throw down the other end. But I said you'd feel pretty much on par both these sides yep. currently. I said Tim Crawford being lost for... Uh, Gordon during the power play and, and um, Ryan Le Gibson for the Penrith. Lettyard has played this late. The cut shot. They've had a shy at the bowler's end with no luck. He really had to reach for that one. It was pretty close to being a wide. Lettyard was almost lying p p parallel to the ground. Yeah. That's, how, that's how far he's had to go and chase that to try and punch the ball out through point. But in the end, we can see that the should be a short delay here while the the split side screens here get moved across, obviously. But then again, usually the protocol is you'll have a couple of the Penrith players should be down there. Well, the it shouldn't the really be one of the fielders, should it? No, no it's, it's not supposed to be, no. no. But the, the screens are big enough you think you could have one or one at either end. But obviously... Uh, Where the one that's the one that's down here near the, near the commentary position is just mm. one that does go... That's obviously three and a half pitches wide so it can just be pushed left or right slightly to move to a pitch but well as I said that end as well it does have the, the the traffic there so you can probably understand that probably want a bit of extra on either side and you don't want that split in the middle where yeah, you get a bit of reflection off a car or something like that here goes Titterson again to Lydiard and he glides this one to backward point again for no run so after four overs here Penrith going at a runner ball. They're one for 24. The target, one for one. Because you kind of wouldn't want to be having, like, obviously the black screen. You're looking for a white ball. And the most off-putting thing for a, for a batter would be a white car going, cutting across that split screen at the exact same time as the ball's up in the air and that, at, at the release point. Because you, be you wouldn't be able to pick it. So, but I can understand the logic there, but... You think you'd have that bottom screen split in a way so you'd have it so it kind of covers both where you can still have a gap, but the way they do it's fine. So it looks like Matthew Wright's going to come in here for a little bit of spin. So they've bowled the, the quicks and medium paces in the first four overs and then they've moved to spin after the power play. This is probably a good thing because also with Lydia being left-handed, he's not... It's not getting into his normal wheelhouse to be able to swing it towards a short boundary. Left arm spinner. Adams dances down the wicket, comes off the pad, no run. Matthew Wright and, of course, Connor Cook is another spinner in this mm. Gordon team. They'll be looking for the, in these middle overs. Here goes Wright again. But quicker. And he's gone straight to the man. That was straight forward. Adams didn't time it off the pad. Slightly quicker ball. And all of a sudden here, Gordon are just getting into these Penrith batters. It's two for 24. But you're also looking at, look at the celebration. It's not where they're getting up and they're really, really over the top. Because they know that, okay, yeah, they've got Gibson. They've now got a second wicket. They know that the challenge is still there. Yeah. They're there's keeping been, composed, yeah, aren't they, for now? There's no use getting over, overly hyped now. Yeah. Where all you know is you need to... One batter just to go absolute pogo and 
knock 30, 40 runs off quickly, and then you're just like, oh, bugger. We're now chasing, we're now trying to defend 80 runs instead of 120. So, just the, I think the, it's well composed by the, the Gordon Club just to be smart enough just to not give any, how would you say, firepower to the to the Penrith Ammunition. Yeah, that's Ammunition. the word I'm looking for. Yep. Well, so, yeah, you saw with Adams just didn't didn't get a chance to, to get going. Yes, he hit the big six, but you just saw from those other balls he was getting tied down and said, so, yeah, the change of pace and just picks out um, Kennedy there at uh, short mid-wicket. It's the last thing uh, Penrith would have been looking for at this stage. So Brent Williams is the new man to the wicket. He's a right-handed batter. Matthew Wright comes on and makes that little bit of Magic early on. Spinners here. Uh, just slowing things down. Here he goes again. Left arm around the wicket. Nice ball to start. Williams just plays this with a nice technique for no run. And he comes in again now right. Plays the late cut. Has he found the gap? I think he has. Yes, he has. It bangs into the picket fence here at Howell Oval. That's a great shot by Williams, just timing it beautifully through the gap. And it's two for 28. Just sounded so sweet off that bat, pinging up across the, the fence. You may have just heard the ting in the back of the effects mic there. And this one, a nice straight one. Of course, Williams getting 88 yesterday. And this time, it's a dot ball. There's uh, Matthew Wright, the left armer. Another quicker one. And they're going to run through for a single. Is Got he him. out? Yes, he is. He's run out of the non-strikers. And Gordon are up at about now. They're celebrating this one. Look at them go. Williams can't believe it. He is fuming. And the Gordon army are getting the beatbox out. Now I'm starting to wake up from the <laughs> all-black hangover. And all of a sudden, it's... Uh, what is it? Three for twenty-eight. <laughs> it is three for twenty-eight. Kiwi Mick. As I said, we we just saw the vision on coming through from Frog Box. It's a great throw by the keeper, straight in the hands of uh, the bowler in right, who was able to flick those bails off before uh, Williams could make his ground. Yep. So there we go. Run out so key. And unless and, I'm mistaken, uh, that's also the end of the over too. Yeah, it sure is. So five overs gone here, and um, Penrith are three for 28. So, yeah, Penrith are three for 28. So Gordon are doing pretty good here. And uh, unless I'm mistaken, Mr. Mr. Kiwi, you can go over break and we'll... Yeah, I'll no? switch over no, soon no, no, as no, we're no, just no. trying we're just to getting a sort out some technical yeah. difficulties. But coming to the wicket now will be... Jordan Watson, an example of how runouts can be important. I watched the Pakistan South Africa highlights the other day. Pakistan missed so many close runouts when South Africa chased it down one by one wicket. If they just got a couple of them, they would have won. But it was the close misses, or if you get them, the runouts. Or if you're watch, or if you're watching Adil Rashid getting clumsily run out in that English game, yeah, where he just backed up too far and didn't even think anything about it, and. And the keeper's just gone ping, hip middle stump, and he's good three and a half, four foot short of his crease there where you're just not focusing on it. Yep. So, Welcome back to Triple H listeners as Jordan Watson is the new man at the wicket. And uh, I'll pass it over to you, Matt Mears. Yes, thanks, Kiwi Mick. Uh, to the hot temperatures here getting to all of us, including the equipment, as uh, we see the first Ball there from uh, Nick Tui, just left outside the off stump. Also, while we get some other things sorted, going back across to the women's competitions out at Raby Oval number one, Campbelltown Camden, the Ghosts hosting Manly. Ghosts posting five for one, two, two. Manly are one for 74, halfway through the 14th over chasing another 50 for victory next one here just pushed into the offside they'll take the quick single that lets Watson get off the mark 
They said it's been a good effort here so far from Gordon. They said you, one of those mid-type totals, 140. It's not quite a low total, not quite a big total, but they said I think Gordon, when they would have been talking in the sheds, this was... This is what they would have been talking about for a, a good start to this innings. And for anyone that is watching us on Frogbox and wanting an update on how the other semi-final is going, if you're cheering for the Randy Peets to win, you're on a good wicket at the moment. Fairfield Liverpool in response to Chase 193, a 2 for 17 after 2. Lydia plays this one through the offside. Finds the fielder out on the cover boundary sweeping. Picks up another single. He moves to 13. We can, Penrith are 3 for 29. We can tell you Carruthers and Jaden Simmons are both back in the the sheds. Carruthers out caught by Adam Sams off McTaggart for 7. And Jaden Simmons caught by McTaggart off Riley Eyre for 2. Currently got Sharma and the skipper and Ornowski currently at the pitch one and seven respectively comes in again to Watson's played into the offside no run this is exactly what we were talking about when we were saying that if Gordon want to have a decent shot at defending this total they have to be getting wickets early and getting them and keeping them cheap but to be honest at the moment they need to get Lydiard he will be the he will be the key for this Penrith side if, if they can get him out early for no for no more maybe another ten runs or so. It should make it a very interesting run chase. Oh, pushed again down the ground, but we'll find the fielder inside the circle. Don't even take a run there. I said it's been a good change here, Tui. Just two runs off five deliveries so far. Good choice of song in the background too by the by one of the teams there. So unless I'm mistaken, that'd be Twisted Sister, I think. I think believe the old, the old so. Song I'm not the person to ask. But <laughs> I believe it is. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, you're not as old as me yet. You haven't well, you haven't no, reached master you haven't reached master status yet. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Final delivery of Tui's first over on the pads. Flicks it does Watson through the leg side. The fielder, though, out at deep square will uh, cut that one off. They'll pick up another single. Good start for Tui. None for three off his first over. And Penrith, three for 31 off six overs here. Target is 141. We can also now tell you, Fairfield Liverpool have just lost their skipper and Ornowski for 11. Caught by Daniel Sams off McTaggart for 11. One ball short of three. Overs completed. Three for 21. Singh has just come to the crease. Sharma is still one off four. Singh, none off one. Three for 21, chasing what looks to be a huge total now of 192 to make it through to the Kingsgrave T20 Grand Final next weekend. So, right, we'll continue here from the northern end. And uh, Watson will just push it into the offside. No run. I know that one of the questions that I think Kiwi Mick may have posed during the first innings and where the grand final be is. That will be decided tomorrow by a competition's manager. Well, Uncle Roy will have his work cut out for him as again just pushed back to the bowler in his follow through. No run. Obviously trying to talk to umpire manager Darren Goodger. He couldn't even give me an answer. Oh, it's been some good Ooh. bowling by Wright here. Watson has had to do a little walk away. Close there to getting an edge through to the keeper. Said, is this what we saw in the first innings as well? Spinners just tying it down here on this pitch. Muffled appeal, but going down leg. Great over from right so far. He's one for four off one point four here. Can he can he finish off this over well? Push down the ground. Beats short cover inside the inside the ring. The cover. Of Boundary rider will cut it off and they'll get two. Watson moves to four. Three for 133 here. One ball left in the seventh. Even even allowing for that two, if they can get a dot ball or at worst one, it'd be a great over from right. Well, what can he do here? And he tries to go back, but finds the fielder at backward point. No run. Two runs off that over from right. One for six off his two overs. 
And it's Penrith, three for 33 off seven, chasing that target of 141. It must seem a long way away for the Panthers at this stage. But I said, I think we've called enough T20 cricket here, Shane Evans, that uh, we know anything can happen. Yeah, well, even a couple of weeks ago in that, in that Sydney Uni Fairfield game where early on you thought the result was a foregone conclusion and in the end it almost changed the way it was and as long, but Penrith just needs to focus and just settle down for an over or two. Tui will continue from the southern end. Oh, Lydia tries to go the big switch through offside but it's uh, like I said, big swing, no ding, goes through to the keeper pretty harmlessly but you can tell Lydia he's 13 off 13. It's not really reflective of the start that he got off to and just a testament to how Gordon have really tightened the screws here in the last few overs. Well, speaking about Gordon, we'll get back to the the 330 women's first grade Premier cricket games after this ball. So Tui coming in from the southern end. Oh, it's just pushed into the offside by Lydia. It was a good ball. It was out on those tram tracks. Full ball. Couldn't get under that one, but does pick up a single. He moves to 14. Penrith, three for, th three for 34. Well, the game that was originally scheduled here was supposed to be the triple header between Penrith and Gordon women's, but they've obviously been moved over to Bill Ball for this game to happen. Penrith on the toss and sent Gordon in. Very good choice there by Gordon. Oh, by Penrith, sorry. Gordon are currently seven for 80 after 16 overs. You know, Watson now on strike. He just pushes the ball behind point. Third man will field that one. Another single. Watson moves to five. Three for 35 in the eighth over. Out at Maryland's Oval. Parramatta taking on Sydney women. Parramatta winning the toss and batting first. Three balls short of the end of their innings. A three for 98. Out at Bankstown Oval. Bankstown taking on St George Sutherland. Bankstown choosing to field first up in the toss. St George Sutherland, three for 91 currently. Lydiard now back on strike and it's full. It's high. Oh, oh. that would have been a magnificent catch. Quinny it and down there at uh, Long On. He flew, he tried to get there, but just agonisingly short for the big fast bowler. Lydia will come back uh, for two, the Penrith keeper, but it was a full ball. It went it went down, but uh, boy, just tension every ball here. Would that have beaten your Austin Wall call? No, I don't know about that. We'll see. As the next one in for Lydia again, he tries to go down the ground, but uh, mid wicket inside the circle picks it up. Another single to the total. As uh, we do welcome all our all the people listening through uh, Frogbox, through the Cricket New South Wales YouTube channel. Welcome. First time listening to us. We're the Triple H Sports Team through Triple H 100.1 FM. If you want to hear more of us, we do call uh, on the regular through uh, the Kingsgrove T20 Cup and uh, New South Wales Premier Cricket on a Sunday. As uh, next delivery to Watson just gets pushed behind square and uh, fine leg will come back and field that one for a single another good over there by Tui only six off it he's none for nine off two Penrith three for 39 off eight chasing 141 but yeah we we do call uh, through the uh, Kingsgrove T20 Cup women's premier cricket on a Sunday also uh, New South Wales rugby league throughout the winter want to know more about us follow us on our socials triple h sport Facebook, Instagram, and X. You'll be able to find out where we are on a Sunday afternoon. As they're getting through the overs very quickly here right now to continue from the northern end. And this one's pumped down the ground by Watson coming towards our commentary area. All just to the left of Shane Evans, but uh, four to the total. That's what the Penrith side needed. Three for 43. Watson moves to 10. But as I said, Wright's been very tidy so far. It'll be interesting to see how he'll come back 
Here now to the right-hander. And it's a faster Ooh. ball. Ooh. It's gone through everybody. It's all happening here at Al Oval. Beat him. It's gone down. It's almost been run out. It's almost an overthrow. He said a lot Let's of work see. for Penrith to do. Still needing 99 for victory. Well, 98, my apologies. As uh, goes down the ground again. Won the bounce there. On the bounce there to uh, Callum Bladen, the uh, opening bowler here down at Long On. Just the single for Watson. But how would you explain that almost run out? See, almost got yorked, almost got stumped, then almost run out, then almost took an overthrow, almost got run out again. It's so confusing, and you could hear probably in the effects might just before when obviously Bladen, who's down here at Long On, not choosing to attack that to try and take the catch either. Oh, the little dinky oh. shot from. Uh, Lydia there, almost finding that man at fine inside the circle. It's, he's just outside his reach, but they'll pick up another single. Also, if you do hear any any choice language on the over the effects mic or through Frog Bucks, we do apologise any of it being transmitted across 100.1 FM and also on the Cricket New South Wales website. Yo, Watson now back on strike. He goes to the big swing towards that short. Boundary to the onside for the right-hander. But uh, all it does is take the pad. No appeal, so must have, I'd say, going down the leg side. Oh, this one's cut away. They will take the quick single. I said, right. Again, just tight bowling here from the left arm orthodox. He finishes uh, his third over. It's been very tight indeed for the left arm orthodox. We'll just pull up the stats here for you. It's three for 46 off nine for the Panthers chasing that 141. Matt Wright, one for 13 off his three overs to date. Well, it's not really bad when you think about it. What was it? I think it was, it was it conceded six or seven. So it still only gave for six. And when we were talking before we went to the innings break, I said that they need to be holding Penrith to 50 or below. They're getting pretty close to hitting that, hitting that 50 mark or keeping it below that 50 mark, knowing that you've now got no Gibson, no Williams. They're back in the sheds already. If they can get Lydia, that's going to be a bonus, and that would put the Kiwi Biz up in the Gordon favour. Connor Cook, the, the second of the spinners for Gordon, comes in the attack, right arm, off spin round the wicket. First ball, Watson just puts it behind uh, behind square to the fielder at fine leg inside the circle, picks up a single. I said, this is this is guy Kiwi Mick. Uh, Kiwi Viz will get, we'll get when he comes back <laughs> on air. He's just he's just relaxing in the background here, enjoying a bit of it. But we'll get his we'll get his first Kiwi Viz when he comes back on in a couple of overs, but I'm assuming at the moment it's probably going to be 50-50 at the moment with, oh, sorry, 49-50 with one to a one to a super over. Oh, jeez, don't don't wish that one on us. As, uh, That's Cook, at the moment. Cook continues round the wicket to the left-hander. I said Lydia tried to get outside the off-stump looking for that short boundary, but it was uh, well scouted by uh, Cook. He just pushed it out a bit further. Just goes into the offside, no run. At the end of this over, we'll also go around the grounds to all the women's first grade Premier Cricket matches. So Cook here again to Lydia. He goes big, but can only find the man at short mid wicket, no run. I said Cook was po pointed out by Kiwi Mick as, as one of the slow bowlers that could really do a job here. He has so far just one run off his first three deliveries of his spell. As he goes down the ground as Liddy, he slashes it through the offside, but can only find the fielder sweeping out on the cover boundary. Just another single. A uh, <laughs> bit, bit of rowdiness coming in in the late afternoon here. I think that was more the fact that, as we could see, and you may have seen it on the, on the frog box, you're seeing the ball bouncing two, three, four times from, the, from that long on fence back to the bowler, which... Normally, most clubs won't do. They'll try and make it a one bounce. 
back to it, but I think just overshot the, the runway. Well, yeah, right on around the wicket to the right-hander, and Watson just pushes it down to long off. Another single. I'm sure Gordon will be happy with them just dealing with singles at the moment. Three for 49 here. One ball left in the 10th. After this ball, we'll go back to Kiwi Mick. As uh, Lydia now on strike, what can the left-hander do? He goes down and tries to go over mid-wicket but can't. Finds the fielder at long on for another single. He now moves to 20. Watson's on 14 and Penrith at 3 for 50. Almost you bang on there, Shane Evans, for that target, that yep. halfway line. And now with 10 overs gone, target's 141, so... 91 needed off 60 deliveries. All to do for Penrith to take you through the next five overs. Kiwi Mick Reinish. Thank you very much, Matt Mears. Yes, it's a well-balanced game here. Kiwi Viz, I'd go Gordon, 55. Penrith, 44. As one I said, for the super over. <laughs> singing, I wasn't far off. I said 50 and 49 and one. Yeah. But Matt right back into the attack again. Here goes right. Dances down the wicket this time. Does Lydiard, and he'll pick up one. So Wright's come on and bowled pretty well. Of course, Jordan Watson on 14, Lydiard on 21. Just while they're resetting the screen, down to Raby Oval 1. Manly need two runs to beat the Ghosts. He goes right to Watson. Plays it late, but plays it well. Down to the man on the fence there at deep cover. Three for 52. Also, the funny thing is that I saw coming through today, boss, on the train trip out here, out at the, out at the cricket field at the back of, of Blacktown Olympic sports fields. I'll get back to that story in a second. He goes right to Lydiard. Goes down the wicket, gives this a good crack. But he's found the fielder on the fence again. So they're just rotating the singles. Three for 53. But they're not quite getting the boundaries here. As the man on the sight screen's having to do a lot of work. He's getting his step count up. Yeah. Doing a very good job as well. He's right onto it. And now it's going to be Watson on strike on 15. Quicker one. He's gone uh -oh. for it. And he's gone. He's caught on the fence. The man racing around there did very well. It was Mitchell Lowell. And Gordon have got their man again. It's four for 53. And you can hear the Gordon boys out there chatting and chirping. They're loving this. They want that spot in the final next Sunday. But once again also with that, with that final, that is yet to be determined. Obviously, there's been a lot of lot of game traffic on Cricket Central, which is where we assume that it may be. But obviously, Uncle Roy, well, or to most of these, Roy Formica, New South Wales Cricket Competitions Manager, will make that decision tomorrow. There's a very good chance it could be at a Cricket Central next Sunday. In other words, it will be at the highest ranking of the two teams, which I actually have to go look back through the ladders and all that, but I would almost safe to say I think it'd probably be Ramwick that would, if Ramwick were to win and and if Penrith were to win, that they would get hosting rights. So looks like it's going to be Jake Scott coming to the wicket now. So Matthew Wright has bowled a very good spell, and it's uh, four for fifty-three here. And Jake Scott, a left-handed batter, to take strike. Lydiard out there on 22. You open the batting, the left-hander, as Jake Scott just has a little bit of a look around the field. Here goes right again with these left-arm spinners. Tosses it up. Smashes it back to the bowler. No run. And Lydiard is going to be a key man here. You can feel he's just got another gear that he can go to. And you really start hitting the ball when he needs to. Oh, and this is a good length ball. Just has to respectfully play it down the wicket to the bowler. And after 11 overs here, 
Gordon, uh, sorry, Penrith are four for 53. The target, one for one. Just having a look at the ladder from the qualifying games. If it stayed, the results stay the way they are on both games with Bramwick Petersham at the moment looking like they'll beat Fairfield Liverpool. And from a Gordon point of view, if they were to beat Penrith, Bramwick Petersham will host as they were a perfect four from four in their qualifying round where if Penrith win, they only won two out of their four. Also, somehow if Fairfield Liverpool were able to do it, they won three. So it's yeah. either going to be Cricket Central or at the moment, possibly out at Coogee if the game stayed the way they are currently trending. Callum Bladen is back into the attack. The pace bowler bowling from the opposite end from where he started. Lydiard on strike. He's on 22. Here goes Bladen. Dances down the wicket and smashes it to the man at cover. But it's literally straight to the fielder. A metre either side, and that was smashing through the picket fence down there. But the fielder down there had such soft hands, like you're watching him, and he just allowed the arms and the hands to give as the ball's coming into him. He's not yeah. trying to have the hard hand and where the ball can possibly deflect out of it as well. Callum Bladen, he's 2.1 overs, 1 for 13, runs in again. Yorker Lev squeezes it away into the offside for a single does Liddy out. He moves on to 23, 4 for 54. Quickly going back across to the women's competition down at Raby Oval 1. Campbelltown Camden Ghosts posted 5 for 1, 2, 2. At the moment with 8 balls remaining, Manly are 2 for 118, needing 5 off 8 deliveries. We'll get, and then all the other games are the ones that kicked off at 3.30. Jake Scott on strike. He's quite a tall batsman, left-hander. Here goes Bladen again. Pushes us into the offside. Good sharp fielding at point here to dive to his left. He did well there. Gordon showing their class here in these T20 competitions. And... Uh, Jake Scott just taking his stance again. Quickly heading over to Maryland's Oval. We can tell you between Parramatta and Sydney. Parramatta batting first, winning the toss. 20 overs down, 3 for 100. Sydney needing 101 to win. Here goes Bladen again. Flicked off the pads, but straight to the man. And the onside. Good stuff by Gordon here. You would have thought maybe they'd just keep bowling Connor Cook, but they've gone back to a man. I think they want another wicket here. Callum Bladen won their strike bowlers. I think it's more control because it's where if you can sit there and jag a one or two run over at the moment yeah. where Cook, if they've said, like, you know what, let's go after him, he could go very quickly if he's bowling to the short boundary too. And this one driven again straight to the man. Missfield. They pick up the single this time. Not as sharp in the field as the last ball. That gets uh, Jake Scott off the mark. Four for 55. We can also tell you out of Bill Ball Oval, the number two field here for the Penrith Club. They're taking on Gordon women. Penrith won the toss. Sent Gordon in after 20 overs. Gordon, a respectable nine for 108, especially after being seven for 40. Streets top scoring 48 not out. And the last but not least will be Bankstown versus St George Southern, which we'll get to after this delivery. So Liddy out on strike on 23. You feel he's going to go soon? Oh, and he's tried the Glenn Maxwell tricky shot, but it's going to be a dot ball through to the keeper. After 12 overs here, Penrith 4 for 55. The target, 1 for 1. As I said, going across to Bankstown Oval, Bankstown taking on St George Sutherland. In the last of the women's first grade premiership matches, Bankstown won the toss and decided to field first. Put St George in after their 20 overs. St George was six for 109. Briscoe getting 30. Rhiannon Dick, a long term servant of the St George Sutherland team, getting 29. So Bankstown chasing 110 for the win there. We can also confirm that the bank, the Canterbury, the Campbelltown Camden 
Manly game has been completed. Congratulations to Manly. They've picked up the win there. And we'll now focus on the Fairfield Liverpool game. Currently, four for 69, chasing 193 for the win. Connor Cook back into the attack. He switched ends. Right arm spinner. Lydiard, leading edge. In fact, that was Jake Scott. He'll pick up the single to that man at deep cover. Four for 56 here. Lydiard That's back on strike. He needs to make a charge here. I think he's just thinking, when am I going to start going? They're going to have to speed the run rate up. Here goes Cook. And he's bowled him. That is big. Cook is loving it. That could almost be game, I reckon, because Lydiard has gone for 23. He eventually had to do something. And look at the Gordon body language out there. Cook, they left him out of that last over. He switched ends, and he gets what he needed. And it's 5 for 56. Yeah, tempting uh, the two left-handers with that short boundary uh, to the offside towards yep. the pack coming scoreboard. And, this, yeah, I think that scoreboard pressure is really building for, for Tyron Lilliard. He's trying to get towards that leg side, open it up, and uh, just some great bowling there from Cook. It was not there to be hit. Takes middle stump, and, uh, boy, it's going to be a big comeback here for the Panthers if they can do it. I think it'd be safe to say Kiwi Viz has just gone to maybe like a a 70-30 or 70-29. Yeah. 70-29. And one. And because one you, for the Super Over. You always have to I, have I that one. one would be for the rain. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't do that today. Yeah. It's too hot. The only, the only, yeah, the, only the next little rain that you'll see won't be until, if I remember correctly, I think it's something like possibly a small shower on Friday. But that's only about two or three mil where tomorrow it's out here. It's supposed to be like 35. Yeah. Adam Bayless is the new man at the wicket. And Connor Cook and Matthew Wright, the spinners, chipping away with some wickets here in the middle. I'm just curious. I wonder if that's the same. I wonder if that's the son of former New South Wales coach Trevor Bayless, who literally is standing behind us in the in front of the clubhouse. Well, yeah. I would, I'd, I'd assume so. It's one of his one of his boys. Because Bayless isn't a regular name. Here goes Adam Bayless on strike. Right-handed batter. Drives it down the ground, straight to the man, and no run. Tried to make his single sound dramatic. And here goes Cook again, the right-arm spinner. This is a better shot through the covers. He'll pick up one to the man on the fence. Five for 57. That's all they need to do at the moment. Just consolidate for another over or so and then then start to look at launching again. Because no use going out there and trying to be cute and go ham and tongs now and lose two or three quick ones. Scott on strike. Nice drive down the ground. Very comfortably played. Five for 58. Starting to feel sorry for this, side, this, this young fellow with the, the side screen at the moment. Because that, that thing doesn't look like... It's probably like about 70, 80 kilos. Try, even though it's on wheels, yeah, it looks like it's got some oomph behind it. So here goes Cook again. Bowling to Adam Bayless. Short one. Doesn't put it away, though. Hits it straight to the man at point. And that's the end of the over. So after 13 overs here, Penrith a 5 for 58. The target, 1-4-1. And heading back over to Coogee Oval, we can tell you after nine overs, Fairfield Liverpool are four for 86, chasing Randwick Petersham's eight for 192. So just under halfway there at the moment, but it probably doesn't help the fact that they've lost Simmons, Carruthers, Sharma and Ornowski at the moment, who are normally their, their better batters at the moment. You've got Singh on 22 off 14, and McCurs come to the crease recently. He's 10 off 5. So Quincy Titterton back into the attack. They're rotating the quicks down the far end of the cricket oval here at Howell Oval. And it's going to be Jake Scott on strike, the left-handed batter. He's on three, Bayless on one. And uh, Penrith eventually going to have to really have a couple of good overs as they just spread the fielders around. And uh, trying to cover all the different angles here. Here goes Titterton. Economical two weeks ago on that final against Parramatta. 
And Scott just drives it straight to cover. Deep cover the man on the fence. Five for 59. And great music being played here at Howell Oval. Nice ground to come and commentate again. First time I've been here. Definitely a nice relaxed feel out here in the west. It's just hot though. Very hot. <laughs> but a real club community feel. Here we True. go now with uh, Adam Bayless on strike. Not a bad shot here off the hip. You'd think they'll come back for a second, surely. Yes, they have a misfield out on the fence. Nice placement there for a couple. Five for 61. So they need, still need another 80 runs off about 40 balls, isn't it? It's now starting to get to the point where they're now having to start to look at, okay, who goes and who do we build around? Here goes Titterton again. Slower ball, pushed into the offside. The fielder dives around the ball but stops it. One run, five for 62. Well, you're starting to think 140 seems to be a, a way, way far away for yeah. for this pen of side where at the start of the innings, you're thinking, okay, seven and over, just on 7.1 overs and over. Then to lose those couple of wickets probably didn't help, but they're still in there. So Scott's on four on strike. Nice drive through the covers. A one-handed fielding effort there by Tim Crawford, the captain for Gordon in the covers. Five for 63. Yeah, great stop there by Timmy Crawford. Well judged, actually, because if it doesn't, if he doesn't stop that, that goes for at least probably three because you've got, you got out on the sweeper boundary and probably a good 86. 60, 80 metre run to get to it. Titterton to Bayless. Unusual looking shot. No run. That was uh, Adam Bayless on strike. Great crowd here at Howell Oval. Once again, we have to do. Th we do have to thank all three, all three groups. Obviously, the Penrith Club, Cricket Club, Gordon, and also Cricket New South Wales for giving us the opportunity today to be able to call this game. Yeah. On Triple H, 100 point one FM, also on Frogbox by YouTube. Titterton. This time he's gone for it and he's found some space. It's going to be four over that sort of mid wicket area. Beautiful shot off the pads there. And they really needed that one. So after 14 overs, Penrith a five for 67. It's almost like they're, they're saying, okay, Cal Corner's open for you. If you want to go, you want to take the opportunity, go for it. Okay, you may get one or two of them. But if you skew it slightly left or right of where you need to hit it, you're going to hit one of two fielders. So the option's there for them to take it, but it'll be a very it'll be very brave to sit there and try and keep doing it as we can see Cook to come in again and Yeah. Go, over, go left arm over the wicket here. So very so, interesting, especially with the left hander on strike yeah. because it's forcing him to either step down the leg to try and hit the short side or go long. Scott's on strike again. A little bit cramped for room, but he'll squeeze it away to point for a single. He moves to six, Bayless on eight, five for 68. As we see the young fella here again, I'd love to, I'd love to see that step count that he's getting in these, in these overs so far. Well, he's getting his fitness up, which is a good thing. Yeah, especially in the heat too. Here goes yeah. Cook now to Bayless. Tosses it up. Swings across the line. Oh. Brilliant fielding inside the circle. If he missed that, it probably would have been four. That was a good dive to the right. There. That should be Kennedy, I think. Yeah, Tristan Kennedy. Great fielding. So Gordon well on top. Penrith, Penrith just haven't really had that surge, except right at the start. And he's got no timing on this one outside the off stump. Another dot ball here for Cook. Coming towards the end of the 15th over. It's 5 for 68. Here goes Cook again now to Bayless. Drives this one through the covers. But the man on the fence has got it covered. 
Five for 69. If you're Gordon, you're, you're almost happy to give away that give away that single and as long as it's not a multiple or going across the boundary. So ones aren't going to help Penrith because it's just going to mean, it, just mean the, the run rate's just going to jump exponentially. Cook again to Scott. Plays it late. Plays it well. And that's straight into the picket fence for four. Beautiful timing there. The late cut. And it's five for 73. That was just unfortunate. Just pitched it a little bit too far outside off stump. Gave him the opportunity just to really sit back late on it and put it through the fence. Oh, and he's York. Nice. Up. That was great spin bowling. Nice comeback. 15 overs gone here. Penrith, 5 for 73. The target, 1 for 1. Over to you, Matt Mears. Thanks, Kiwi Mink. It's going to have to be a big five overs here for the Panthers if they want to get the job done here at Hal Oval if you're just tuning in. Thank you for listening. Triple H Sports coverage here on Triple H 100.1 FM and through Frogbox, the Cricket New South Wales YouTube channel of this Kings Grove Sports and a T20 Cup semi-final between the home team Penrith and Gordon. As said, Penrith currently... Penrith, they uh, need to get the... Uh, a wriggle on if they want to be able to chase down this target of 141. Um, I said, still a lot of work to do. Looks like you've got Bladen coming back on again, and if I'm not mistaken, mm. and Jersey 18. Or am, or am I reading the wrong wrong number? Uh, it does look to be Bladen coming. Oh, it's Tui. Yeah. Looks like it's, it's Nick Tui to, that's going to uh, continue from that end. No, it is Bladen. It looks like, uh, with apologies there, we're just going off what uh, the frog box uh, commentary is telling us, but uh, it is incorrect. Well, we are the frog box commentary. No, well, I mean the, <laughs> the, the graphics. graphics, yes. Yeah, the graphics, yeah. But yeah, it is, it is uh, Bladen that will bowl his uh, fourth and final over from that southern end. I said still a big target. Only just halfway there. Five overs to go for the Panthers. Up in the block hole there to Bayless. He pushes it down the ground. Picks up a single. Five for 74 here. They're now at the point where they need to start pushing and scoring off every ball to do it. Okay, fair enough. We know that in the higher levels, you can probably sit there and know that your last two or three overs, you can comfortably score 25, 30 runs, but... On the deck, that's just getting lower and slower. As we can, as we can just see the the Penrith players in the middle, just telling their comrades to go down the other end of the field and do that sight screen. And they're all sitting there, not wanting to move. As uh, Layden comes in round the wicket to uh, Scott, and he can only find that man at uh, short cover. Another dot ball here. Only one off these first three deliveries so far. And back over at Quidgy Oval, we can tell you Fairfield Liverpool are currently 4 for 97. 11 overs completed, chasing 193 for the win to defeat Ramwick Petersham at the moment. Sing on 27 and McCurr is on 15. So Bladen continuing around the wicket to Scott and he goes down the offside trying to scoop it over the short fine leg inside the circle, but... Uh, there's nothing going right for the Panthers here so far. If that's connected, we're, we're safe. It's the people on the other mm -hmm. side of the the mini batting cages that are here that they use for the practice that would be in trouble if there's anyone on the other side there, which is obviously the warm-up field that the Panthers use for the rugby league teams. It's been a great over by Bladen so far. Can he finish it off? Scott goes towards the leg side. He gets it past the short mid-wicket. But great fielding by the sweeper at mid-wicket. Cuts it off. Can only pick up two. I said that fielding performance, you can tell Gordon, they're wanting to make this final. Penrith, they said they need to fi start finding the boundary if they want to get this uh, 
spot in the uh, Kingsgrove Sports and a T20 Cup Grand Final next weekend. Scott faced the last delivery of over 16 here. Only three runs off the over so far. Again, tries Ooh. to get outside off stump to sweep it round the corner. Can't make connection. Great over by Bladen. It's been a great comeback. He went for a few in his first over. He bowled the first over of this innings. He's come back one for 18 off his four overs. And Penrith, five for 76. 141 is that target with only four overs remaining. Yeah, so it looks like you'll see Cook coming back on again to bowl his spin to, to be able to put a bit more stress on this Penrith side in order to get these runs. So, But what is it, about 7, about 60-something off 4? 65, I believe, if my maths probably is failing me. 65 off 24, so mm. yeah. Connor Cook, he continue. He's been good. This one's slayed down the ground by Bayless. But uh, it is cut off there at long off. So another single. Scott now back on strike. Cook's bowled well. He's one for 14. One ball into his fourth over. Now the left-hander on strike. Cook round the wicket and he slashes it Ooh. through the hands. He slashes it through the hands of Nick Tui there at short cover. No one behind him here to this short boundary. Much needed for here for Penrith. Five for 81. 60 required. That would have been a great take there also by Tui, but he just couldn't get enough of a hand to deflect it away from the, the fence he had sat into. Now the reverse sweep for oh. the left-hander. Gets it fine past the fielder at backward point. Four more runs to the total. Now you can hear the Penrith faithful sort of uh, chirping up a little bit there. Back-to-back -back boundaries to the left-hander. He's gone a bit Maxwell there, but he's played that so well. He's waited to be basically under his eye line to then do that reverse paddle and kept it along the surface all the way. Said Cook, what's he going to come back with here? Right arm round the wicket. And this time he slays it again over the offside. Finds some vacant space and it's triple four. Three boundaries in a row to the left-hander. I said this is the over that the Panthers needed. Five for 89 here. If you're Timmy Crawford, you're disappointed and you're... The two fielders there, he's had two of them, they both looked at it. One saying yours, one saying yours, and it's like, oops. Well, this one's straighter by Cook. It's hitting the onside. No one at mid-wicket inside the circle. They're going to come for two. Great running no. there by Bayless. He gets home at the non-striker's end. And uh, a much needed over here for the Panthers. 15 off it so far with one ball left remaining. No, it's still it's still making it that you're looking at like 45 off 18 or 19 at the moment. So here you go. What can Scott do off the final one? Again, he pushes it into the vacant mid-wicket area. He'll retain the strike. 16 runs from the over. Cook finishes his four overs, one for 29. Panthers, five for 92. Off, off 24. Oh. So that's what? Or 49 off 24, yeah. sorry. 49 off 24. Cool run, rate of, run rate of just over 12. Mm. Yeah. They said if they can get another big over in. And here you go. Umpire Penman's calling the, the power surge call at the moment. So these next two overs will decide it, or one of these two overs will decide who will make it through to the final because you would assume that if Gordon can hold them to, say, 15, 20 in these two overs, but they'd be pretty much there. But while we are getting ready, we can tell you Fairfield Liverpool are currently 4 for 109 in the 12th over, chasing 193 to defeat Randwick Petersham at this time. Yeah. 
Yeah, Tui's going to have to do a job for his team here. He's been bowling well so far. Two overs, none for nine. Yeah, that's right. So it's going to be Tui bowling now to Jake Scott, who's on 27. So he's uh, sped things up a bit here. As he runs in now, Tui. Scott's gone for this, but he hasn't timed it at all. They are going to get a single to that man in the fence eventually in that deep square leg position. Yeah, you could almost see that knuckleball type delivery there to get, like, not to try and make it almost a spinner, but if you're watching the baseball, obviously, you hit it so that the ball will look like it's going to be nice and fast and then just drops like an absolute anchor at, just as it gets to the pop increase there. And nicely bold in the end, actually, because obviously the batters are looking now to hitting it more than to a ball as they need to to be, get the get these respective runs back. Adam Bayless on strike. Full toss. Doesn't get a hold of it though. They'll pick up one. And it's five for 94. Here in the 17th over the target. One for one. We can also tell you there's a fifth wicket has fallen out at Coogee at the moment. Kurt McCurr has just been caught by Sam's off... Jason Rolston for 21. Five for 1-1-1 one, one, one at the moment. Singh's still in, and Farmer has just come to the crease. Whoosh. Another big swing there from the left-hander in Scott. It's been a good over so far here by Tui. He's, he's been impressive so far. I think the Gordon supporter bus is just turning up there in the the background. I, don't think, I don't think that's their support of us. Maybe, maybe it's the uh, the casual fans that have just made their way out just in time to uh, see the end of the match. So what can the Panthers do here now? He swings big, he swings uh -oh. high. Not far enough. Oh, an absolute oh. screamer down there at deep long on. He's tried to go big towards the trees at deep mid wicket. And he's just gone up in the air, stuck the one end out and just hoped to all everything that it was going to stick. And boy, did it stick. S everything going the way of the, of the Gordon side here now. What a catch. Well, we, you talk about Austin Ward. We've seen at the SCG a couple of years ago, which... Give you credit, was Superman. That's the same type of thing, but he's almost gone Spider-Man, like climbing up the wall, just threw the mid up at the last second as if he was playing at centre field, and it's just managed to stick in the tops of the fingertips, and he was able to control the roll as he as he landed. Obviously, someone has given him absolute send off from one of the lower grade Penrith guys, because you could see the fielder just giving him the single, the one finger salute straight across to them to point him out and say, yep, mate, that catch is for you. But that was just absolutely superb there. I hope that would come up on Frogbox, but I think it's going to be just out of camera it, shot. It is out of camera shot, unfortunately. Oh. But our man Quincy Titterton, we've seen some great fielding from him so far. But hopefully we uh, can... Uh, Get maybe some fan footage of something, I don't know. But boy, what a catch as uh, the new batter in uh, Liam Dodrell comes to the crease and he uh, just pushes this one behind point, uh, behind square, sorry, to uh, get off the mark. Penrith now, six for 97, one ball left in the 18th. So that's what, 43 off 13? Or my, my mathematics out a bit. 46. Sorry, 46 off. 46 off 13. Okay, you're hitting three a ball now as an absolute minimum. Yeah, they need to find some boundaries, but Tui, boy, one for 12, 
One ball short off his uh, three overs, and this one's played down the ground by Bayless, scrambling to get the other end. Ooh. He does make it as the throw is wide. He moves on to 13. Penrith, six for 96 here. Two overs to go. 45 required. We've seen crazier things happen in T20 cricket, but... Yeah. You have, Boy, to, you have to remember, there's still one over the power surge still to go. So I know this is probably stating the bleeding obvious. This is the over that they've got to go large and go real large. This has got to be like a... 25. A, a, De a Devon Conway or a... Jimmy Neeson. Or, yeah, Jimmy Neeson type. 29, 30 over. Glenn Maxwell. Yeah. What's it? Even Daryl Mitchell last night. Dave Warner. Yeah, all those ones, yeah. How, he's in great form. Not too bad from someone that everyone wanted to be booting out of the Australian yeah. side all of six, seven weeks ago. But in the end, it's all worked out well, so... Well, that man, Quincy Tittenden, coming back to bowl. He's final over here. Three overs, none for 18 so far. Penultimate over here, and just a big swing by Bayless trying to target that short boundary. But uh, top ball to start the 19th here. Unfortunately, that's what they've got to do. They've got to, they have to be at least three or four of these balls have to clear that boundary. Where, to be honest, you could probably still chase 21 22 in a last over because all you need is a no ball front foot or a no ball waist height. There's your free hit. There's your extra ball. Comes in again, and Bayless this time tries to play through the offside. Titten and trying to keep it away from that short boundary, but can't get anything on that. But I said they've, they've set the field for that. They've got the fielder down at third man and deep point. Also with the, the fielder inside the circle as well. They'll be wanting him to hit through that offside. Try and keep it away from that short boundary. Even Titterton's figures are good. No wicket for 18 in his fourth. Mm. Yeah, he's done well, the big man, as that one's bowled him. Straight through him. That's, that's given the big man even more reason to celebrate. Taken middle peg. And if it's if that wasn't the final nail in the coffin before, it may be just now as Bayless goes for 13. Seven for 96 now here with the target of 141 with only nine balls remaining in the in the game. Yeah. Well, he had they had no choice. You you've got to be you've got to be hitting large in order to try and chase this total down. So you can't you can't sit there and get angry at him if you wanted the Penrith players or the staff because stuff isn't working. But at the moment, you just got to do what you need to do in order to try and get some runs on the board. So. If you go, if you swing hard and you were to, and you lose your wicket, but you can pick up a couple of boundaries, you take it. So, but speaking well, of losing wickets, we can also now tell you there's another, another wicket's fallen over at Coogee. Fair for Liverpool, a seven for 118. Farmer was out for fourth ball duck, and Nishche has just been run out for first ball golden duck. Welcome to a primary club. Singh is still there, 39 or 30. And Frendo has just joined the crease. So it's 7 for 118, 14 overs gone, chasing insurmountable 193. So you'd almost sit there and say, unless something miraculous happens, if it's a club team hosting the final, we go into Coogee next week. Well... We'll be waiting to see that during the week as now Luke Hodges is the new batter for Penrith. Hit it and puts it outside off stump. Another big swing from the left-hander, but goes through to the keeper. No run. What an over this has been. Four dot balls and that all-important 19th over. Yeah, they, they And it's a power surge over, isn't it? It is. This is a great over of bowling. I know that they. I know that they don't do man the match awards, obviously, because it's in the final series. But at the moment, Quincy Tedderton has to be sitting there at either three or two. Oh, again, just called wide. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, but uh, they'll take that. The Panthers. Any any wins a win for them at this point. 
but they said it's been a great bowling performance by all the golden bowlers. They needed them to step up. We said that target of 140, it was that middle sort of target. It wasn't a low one, it wasn't a high one. It was going to mm. take a good bowling effort, and that's what we've seen from all five of the uh, Gordon bowlers used today. As Titan comes in, final delivery, and again Hodges tries to go. Ooh. And again, called wide by the umpire. They dash through for a bye as well. Okay, this one I said, it's been a great over. He's bowled a couple of wides. Commentator's curse, number one. Well, I said it, 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 it's not no, too odd. The die. commentator's curse would be if you sat there and said that it's going to be a bad over and they go for 20. A couple a couple of wides you can understand because you're obviously trying to reduce them the opportunity to score yeah. twos, fours, and sixes. I said, trying to finish this over. This one goes out off the outside edge. There is a fielder down at third. They'll look for the second. He said, a better throw, maybe just lost a bit of its oomph with that bounce. They get back for two. It's now gone past the 107 for 101 here. One ball left in the 19th. Yeah, well, it's still seven down over at Kudji at the moment. Seven for 123. Frendo's just had his first scoring shot, but we'll, after this ball, we'll start to look at some of the women's first grade Premier Cricket matches from the 3.30 time slot. We might wait and we'll do them when this game is over. As this one's up in the block hole to Dodrell. All he can do is uh, find the skipper Tim Crawford at mid-on. That's the end of Quincy Titterton's spell for today. He finishes his four overs, one for 24. Penrith, seven for 102 off 19. They need 39 off the last over to make the uh, Kingsgrove T20 final. Yeah. If you're Penrith, you are hoping for a lot of sixes and possibly a no-ball front foot with a six, so you get another opportunity for a free hit and another six there and try, but it's almost down to the nine possible. But then again, we have seen a few times in the Caribbean Premier League and in the Indian Premier League where 39 have been scored off and over. Not really? to not to win a match, but they have it has happened obviously with a with a no with a no ball or wides being yep. called, or multiple wides being called. Well, it's up to Liam Dodrell. He's going to face uh, Nick Tui for the final over, and he's bowled him. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want to see from your fast bowlers in the final overs, full and straight. He tries to get outside the to open up that onside to go for that short boundary but it clips off stump Penrith lose their 8th eight. 8 for 102 here in the 20th that's just well bold if you're the Gordon Club especially for Tui just to sit there and have it hit just in the right spot because it's only just knocked over the top of the the off bail so wasn't trying too hard to put it too full or too short Yeah, great delivery though, was it? Tui and Titterton have bowled really well there, pace man. Even Bladen's been okay. But um, they're, they're doing this for these, aren't they? Defending 140. They must have known that just hold your nerve, four wickets down, 140, chip away and back it. Chasing Maybe in a final. Maybe that was their plan, you know? Also, chasing in a final. It's a, it's a different game, a final series. Yep, it is. It said that scoreboard pressure. They took wickets in the power play. We, we said that before the inning started. They... That was important. Get them on the back foot, and that's what they've done. As uh, Ben Ruffin makes his way to the crease at number 10, almost the impossible task in front of him for the left-hander. But he will be hitting leg side towards that short leg side boundary towards the pack common scoreboard. As uh, Nick Tui comes in. He does go the big swing, but it goes over the offside. Pitches once, twice. Finds the fielder on the cover boundary. They pick up a one. Eight for 103 here. Four balls left in the innings. Also, I tell you, another wicket has fallen over at Coogee. Eight for 125. Frendo out for three. Caught McTaggart off of Ryan Ninnan. Michael S um, M. Singh still in there at the moment. 40 off 36. Liam Hatcher has just come to the crease. 
said now Dodger wants oh another big swing by Hodges we saw it from him the last over he couldn't get bat on ball against uh, against Quincy Titterton and then there again it was just short of a length he threw the kitchen sink at it to try and go to that short boundary but uh, just goes through the keeper no run three balls left this isn't a bad idea because I know you probably can't see it on the frog box but but Tui's got the long on coming up, and he's put the four, he's put he's put the third man back well and truly there, just on the off chance that the ball flies over the top. Well, this one again, he tries to go down the ground, but maybe just keeping a little bit low here. Final over, soft ball, but uh, again, another dot ball. I said we, we talked about the other bowlers for uh, for Gordon, but Nick Tui here, two for fourteen. With only two balls left in his spell. He has certainly done the job here for his Gordon side. I said we will wait for these final two balls. I said it will probably be a big roar from the Gordon faithful after this one. As again, it's just, it's just left outside off stump. Hodges just shrugs. Yeah, that was unusual, wasn't it? Yeah, just shrugs at the umpire, maybe looking for a wide like he got at the other end. I don't know, but that's why that's that why one looked pretty mm -hmm. close to the stumps, in my opinion. Yeah, that's all I think Hodges is looking at, just hoping umpire Troy Penman would just say, okay, wide. I think Troy just wants to go home. <laughs> that's yeah. He's not getting paid for by the hour, he's Troy Penman at this no. point. Last ball of the 20 overs. Hodges just smashes this one down the ground. They'll jog through for a single. He looks for two. <laughs> Does um, roughen, but uh, no two there. That's the end of the innings. Penrith end up uh, 38 or 37 runs short, and uh, Gordon will make their way through to the uh, Kingsgrove Sports in a T20 grand final next week. We'll give you an update of that other game before we will go off air and who they will be taking on. But we'll go through the tail of the tape. It was first Ryan Gibson, the skipper. He was the first one to fall in the power play. He was out LBW to Callum Bladen, three off six deliveries. Nick Adams, he also hit that big six but couldn't get going. Caught by Tristan Kennedy, the bowling of Matt Wright, six off eight. Brent Williams, he was also out cheaply, four off four. He was run out but run, but from from the keeper, James Newton, to the bowler in Matt Wright. Tyron Lilliard, he tried to go big but just couldn't get going as well. Seems to be the story of the day for the Penrith side. He was bowled by Connor Cook, 23 off 28. Jordan Watson, he was caught by Mitch Lowell off the bowling of Matt Wright, 15 off 22. Jake Scott, he was caught that massive catch by Quincy Titterton. Off the bowling of Nick Tui, 28 off 24. Uh, Adam Bayless, he was bowled by Quincy Titterton off the, uh, for 13 off 18. Liam Dodrell, he was bowled by Nick Tui, 4 off 4. Luke Hodges finishes one not out off 5. And Ben Ruffin, one off one deliveries. There were six extras. And Penrith finishing 8 for 104 off their 20 in chase of the 140 set by... Gordon earlier this afternoon. The bowling for Gordon, boy, they'll be really happy looking at this. Callum Bladen, four overs, one for 18. Quincy Titterton, four overs, one for 24. Matt Wright, four overs, two for 16 with his left arm orthodox. Nick Tui, four overs, two for 15. And Connor Cook, four overs, one for 29. Kiwi Mink, we were wondering if 104 was going to be enough. And boy, it's turned out to be plenty here for this Gordon side. Penrith just yeah. not being able to get going. That scoreboard pressure chasing in a semi-final. And uh, Gordon will be playing grand final cricket next week. Yeah, 140. We thought at the halfway point, I actually thought Penrith would chase it down, but Gordon won with ease. All of their bowlers here for Gordon went for less than a run of ball, except Connor Cook. So that says it all, especially in a 2020. That's amazing. And um, Penrith will be pretty disappointed. They had a good crowd out here today. But um, Gordon with those bowlers like Nick Tui and, and Titterton. Bishy Nick Tui was very impressive. And obviously Matthew Wright, 2 for 16 of 4. 
uh, outstanding work. So they just couldn't get hold of any bowler, really. That's what you need to get hold of at least a couple, and then maybe there would have been a chance. But congrats to Gordon, and, you know, they've done well. They're in the final. They certainly have Shane Evans, as said. Probably the underdogs, but I think that's the way Gordon like it. We've seen them go on these runs before in the Kingsgrove T20 Cup. They make the grand final, not having played a home game at all throughout this uh, 2023 Kingsgrove uh, T20 series. That's probably the thing that's more outstanding. The fact is they haven't had the opportunity to play in front of all their colleagues at their beloved home at Chatswood Oval. They've had to make the trips out to every other home field to to play on Sundays, which I know it's a new system, obviously, to prepare for the Big Bash coming up in a few weeks. But to go and win four regular round games away from home, then win, a, then win your quarter, then win your semi, to make it to the big dance and not even get the opportunity to play at home... Mate, that's an outstanding effort from the from the Gordon Club. But I'll go back to what I said before. When you get to that half, half halfway mark, they needed Penrith to be at 50 or less. And in the end, that pressure has got to them in the end. But as we can now hear through the effects, Mike, you'll be able to hear the Gordon guys singing that team song loud and proud. We are not close to them in our commentary They're position. They're loud, aren't they? Yeah. We're a good 50 metres or so away, and uh, we hope you're enjoying that, and we apologise if there's any... Uh, Choice language. Yes, uh, through that one. But uh, we do know Gordon will be playing in that grand final venue, TBA, Shane Evans. Do we have a result in the uh, in the other semi-final, the Randy Peets versus uh, Fairfield Liverpool? Not as yet. At the moment, Barabas just come to the crease after Liam Hatcher was was caught by McTaggart for one off Ryan Ninnan again. Currently with three overs remaining, Fairfield Liverpool a nine for 138, chasing 193. Uh, Singh's still in there. He's just gone to 50, so 18 deliveries for 50-odd. Kind of situation that we had here with someone that's set in a tail ender. Singh's going to have to farm the strike and farm it quite well for the next five or ten minutes but at the moment unless there is unless there's some change from cricket new south wales there's a very good chance you we should be out at Coogee oval next sunday afternoon but once again once the result's done please check the cricket new south wales socials and the triple a socials later in the week once we get received confirmation from roy formica the competitions manager as to where the final will be. It may be still a Cricket Central. I'd love for it to be there, being a neutral, being a neutral venue. Obviously, we've just seen the, the, Sydney, the Sydney Thunder have a Renegades women's big bash there and looked great on TV. I'd love to back there calling again, but at the moment, we just don't know. But Cricket New South Wales and Roy will make that call sometime tomorrow. At, I put my money on it. It's going to, it will go to Coogee B and the Remy, Remy Petersham are the highest... Well, so Place we, team. We can, we can speculate. We can tell you actually like. that the game is done. Singh has been caught for fifty all out. Fairfield Liverpool one three eight. So unless they make it, unless they change their mind and play it at central, we are definitely heading to Coogee. Mate, it could be anything. They could they could schedule it for North Sydney Oval for all it we know. It could be. It like, could be. We yeah. we we. we uh, we have, it has been a neutral venue for the last few years. As I said, we did call it at Cricket Central last year. So I oh, know we be, didn't. We did, didn't. We we called it at Sydney Uni, didn't we? It was at Sydney Uni last year. It was at Sydney Uni last year. My apologies. We called the one day final at Cricket Central, yeah. but Cricket Central wasn't ready at that point. <laughs> we will find out during the week. Make sure you, if you follow our socials, if you're listening to us for the first time through Frogbox and Cricket New South Wales YouTube channel, you can follow us on our socials. If we're not through Frogbox, you can still get our audio call. You can follow us, Triple H Sport, on Facebook, Instagram, and X. We will tell you where we will be next week. We will be calling the grand final wherever they decide to have it. Randy Peets versus Gordon. I think for the team, Shane. Before, oh, no, one before last thing before we go. Yes. Obviously, everyone's listening through Triple H, knowing that the CBAA Awards and conferences oh, yes. happening this weekend, or coming up. 
for you and Kiwi and for Georgia and all that, best of luck, obviously, in the running again for the Troy Garner Award for Excellence in Sports Programming, which was obviously our New South Wales Rugby League Women's and Men's Grand Final call. So hopefully by the next time that you hear us live, there may be a second Troy Garner sitting in our hot little hands here at Triple H. So, well, we, so we best have, of luck. We but, have but fingers, we'll... toes, everything crossed for that one. Um, but if also, that good luck to yeah. Radio Tagumpai. Right. Also, uh, one of our fellow uh, Triple Hians. They're also nominated in their category yeah, as well. For the so. multi- multicultural and ethnic affairs programs, which they are very highly ranked from speaking to people at CBAA. But yeah, we win the award, go back to back, almost Penrith like. <laughs> Mr. Russell, our technical director, is going to have to redo the redo our intro for next week. Oh, well, we'll, so. we'll, we'll uh, but let's but let's wait and see what I happens. Think, I think we do, and I think I think we uh, we've well, that's we're next week. That's next weekend's question. Yeah, we've almost we outstayed our weekend. welcome here at um, at I'm Hal Oval. <laughs> Thank you very much again to Penrith uh, for hosting us here. Uh, commiserations to you. Good luck to Gordon next week. We'll be there for that final. So Kiwi Mick, Shane Evans, Matt Mears, thank you very much for for listening to us for your Sunday afternoon. We'll be back same bat time, same bat channel, 2.30 p.m. for the Kingsgrove Sports and a T20 Cup Grand Final. We look forward to hearing you then. We'll catch you down the road.